calls whatsoever, right. but you may see some people file by. Is there a light in this room, red light? Uh, I don't think so. He'll tell you. Yellow action. Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, January 8th, uh, 630 um, Council Workshop. Um, Councilor Katarina had an idea of getting our representatives together to speak about some issues uh, that between the town and the state and funding and um, we're going to discuss that tonight with our representatives here. Um, we have, um, is it, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, Representative Boyle? Uh, we're senators. Uh, Senator here, Boyle yeah. and Senator Millett and Representative uh, Volk here with us tonight. Um, Representative Shiraki was unable to attend because she had previous uh, engage engagements in Augusta, I believe it was. So let's get started. Um, we'll uh, start. I'll start first with um, Councilor Caterino. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks so much for coming down. All three of you were coming home early, I guess, uh, depending on uh, how the day went. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that you could come. I know one of my goals in being elected was to improve uh, communications between the town council and those who represent us in Augusta uh, and just get some dialogue going about uh, the impact on uh, the decrease in revenue sharing uh, and decrease in school funding on uh, the town of Scarborough and the 20,000 people who live here in the, in the uh, town. Um, I'm, not, I'm not looking at it as, oh, we're just going to sit here and say, what are you guys going to do when we're really mad and whatever, whatever. I really see this as a two-way uh, conversation, and I'd also like to hear from the three of you um, ways in which we can help you also, because I know uh, it's not easy being in the legislature. Um, luckily, as a town councilor, we don't have uh, party caucuses to answer to, and we don't have... Jim calls them advocates, I call them lobbyists, uh, <laughs> standing outside the, the doors waiting to grab us the minute we, uh, we leave the doors. Um, but we are certainly um, advocates for the people of the town of Scarborough uh, and elected, obviously, by them to represent their interests. And I know when I was campaigning this time around, uh, I heard over and over and over again, help, help, help with my property taxes. Uh, and people are very concerned about that. That was really the top of, of their list for most folks. So again, thank you for coming. And um, I, I would say why don't we go around and make sure everyone knows who everyone is, too. Oh, OK. Yeah, well, just right. go ahead. Ann. I'm Ed Blade. I think I've, <laughs> I've met you. Good idea. Uh, and I'm, I'm very interested in, in what's going to be happening this year. Uh, last year, we. A year, actually a year ago tonight, we had a workshop and one of the items on the workshop was to limit growth in our uh, budget by no more than 3%. And uh, when we went through that, it all came out pretty close to 3%. And then all of a sudden, the state fell down right in front of us and our mill rate increase was over 7%. Uh, we can't afford that anymore. We just can't afford it. Something's got to be done. So. Okay, um, Amy, yeah. uh, introduce yourself. And I'm Amy Volk. <laughs> I represent <laughs> half of Scarborough, the coastal side of town, um, from Cape Elizabeth to Old Orchard, and not even most of the time up to Route 1. <laughs> hey, well, I'm Councilor Richard Sullivan. Jim? Your chairman. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Excuse me. Yep. Uh, I'm Jim Benedict. <clears throat> I've been on the council a couple of years, and each year seems to get a little more confusing when it comes to trying to understand what the at the state level what is being done. Uh, it, it seems to me that they get into it. You people get into a disagreement about something, and the next thing we know, our taxes go up. And uh, as Ed said, 
my concern is I just just can't keep going this way. I've been in town over 10 years. My taxes have doubled. And I can't say that anything within the town has doubled for the cost of it except for reimbursements to the state. And it's always reimbursement, reimbursement, reimbursement. But then on the other hand, it's spend, spend, spend. And then no one has the ability or doesn't share the care to share the ability to stand up and say, no, we can't do it. It just, it just cannot be done. Uh, instead of, I hate to say it, and I don't mean it in an accusatory fashion, but it seems like no one's got the backbone to stand up and say, no, no more. And it, it's costing us people moving out of town, and it's costing some, some of the services in town to go down a little bit, not a lot. But uh, I get tired from a councilman's point of view of, of people pointing fingers saying, oh, Scarborough is such an affluent town. You can do that. Well, no, it, that should have nothing to do with what we get charged for. And worse than that, the way we get charged, it's not like we even have a say in the matter. It's just, here's your share. Well, I don't remember being asked to sit in on any conversations on what our share is or even a reasonable explanation as to what our share is. And uh, I think it would be easier to swallow if we all knew where the bang for the buck was going. Um, I guess that's about all I have to say because it, it, it's got me pretty annoyed from the point of view of I escaped Massachusetts to escape some of the baloney that goes on with the government in Massachusetts and what gets paid and how it gets paid. Uh, the big dig in Massachusetts, I, I guess, is something I would expect all of you to know about. If you don't, I'll be glad to tell you at another point. But that was just one of the biggest farces, the way the government allowed that money to be spent. And I just heard on the news again last Sunday that they've got to go redoing a good portion of it which is, to me, that's unacceptable. Someone's going to be held accountable somewhere. I mean, there's, uh, as a former contractor, I know from when I worked on public land, they make you come up with a bond. There's bonding companies, so you might have to put up a $200,000 bond, but it's only going to cost you 2000 and the charges can be from zero to 10 percent, and the town, city, whatever, can insist in your contract that you've got a bond, and the purpose of the bond is so that if you, the contractor, goes bad on whatever part of the job was yours, someone's going to pay for it. And they, they, they don't seem to be enacting those things, so they'll, they'll put them in place, mm -hmm. and then they don't want to get the people to, to get them called upon. So it, it, there's something lacking somewhere, and I'm hoping that we can make better decisions on the way that this this whole thing is being run, run and it's the spending of the money. Mm -hmm. Jessica? Well, I'm Jessica Holbrook. Um, I am the vice chair this year. Um, I also have the daunting, scary task of chairing finance committee this year. <laughs> um, so certainly a lot of my concerns are, are going to, in, in questions and in thoughts, are, are going to kind of revolve around the money aspects as well. Um, this is my, my fourth year here um, in pretty much every year, and I, and I followed things before that as well. but. Um, you know, every year I've been here, 
we Scarborough <coughs> has continually kind of become a big loser in funding, whether that's through municipal revenue sharing, whether that's through school funding. Um, so, and it always comes at the 11th hour as the final answer of what we're going to not get or how much we're going to get. And so my questions are, what can we do to improve that situation where we have already come to the point of every department has a budget now we're trying to get something in front of the voters and we're not finding out until it's you know three or four days before it goes to a referendum which is also a mandate that we you know set out to do that with <coughs> um, and it's all last minute stuff so what can we do to speed that up so that we have a better idea coming into building our budget as a town um, what we will or will not receive for those fundings, whether it's school funding, whether it's municipal revenue sharing, um, whether it's our roads. We, we haven't been receiving our funding for our, our state-owned roads, and Scarborough's had to sink what is normally our budget for our portion of roads into those state roads, and that is going to soon be a huge issue for us. Um, obviously, like I said, if we're spending our money on state roads, we're not maintaining ours. Um, so. How can we improve these things so that we know sooner? Um, certainly, um, I, I would love to know. I, I've, not, I've never really had a good answer to that. What is our recourse? I, I mean, every year again, we kind of sit back and say, "Well, you're not getting a million. You know, you're getting a million less." Or, and, and I can understand that, but we are vastly coming to the point we aren't getting anything. So do we have a recourse to, to this? Uh, you know, what can we do? I, I think we pay as a town and a community a, a lot of money into these um, county taxes and state taxes and so forth, and, and our citizens do. And what's our recourse? Uh, why, you know, we keep paying into it. What, how do we recoup some of that? Especially when, um, you know, again, we have a lot of things that are, um, especially with the schools. They're state mandates. They're things you have, we're required to offer. They, they come with no funding. Um, so again, you know, what can we do to either, you know, or at least, the very least, what can we do to be more conscious of mandates as they come down that come with no funding? Um, I guess I want to point out, um, I'm not sure some of you new counselors may not be aware of this, but the municipality itself, we, we as a finance committee last, last year, um, had <coughs> asked the manager to give us a five-year trend. And as a municipality, we've reduced our spending over a five-year period by 2%. Um, so we are actually spending less as a town. Unfortunately, the bad news is, is because of all those cuts, and all of the, the lack of revenue that's come in, um, as a town, we have picked up 22%, I believe, it was somewhere right in there, um, that we're up in a five-year trend um, for our school and county. Um, all of this money is still coming. I mean, again, it's coming out of these, you know, the, our citizens' pockets. And, um, you know, as far as a municipality goes, I, I won't speak for the school. I don't line item look at their things they get to play with their money how they wish but as a municipality we've gone to what we can we're, we're at this point of no return we have not hired we have not i mean we're working off of the same numbers with police departments fire departments there's nothing left to give we have nothing more to sink into our schools so again the magic numbers here is you know what you know we need help <laughs> and we need your guys's help because obviously we're down here we're we're not up there so um so that's my speech okay. <laughs> bill uh i'm i'm new i just got elected a month or two ago i guess Jean Marie and i did uh, i campaigned on uh, uh budget responsibility uh, and uh, control and predictability and there were two incumbents running against us, and uh, we won big. So the voice of, of our town was, was heard pretty clearly that uh, a greater budget responsibility. And last year, the thing that put this council behind the eight ball was a dramatic reduction in revenue sharing. Yeah. I looked at 
uh, the history of revenue sharing, the main municipal association write up, and there's just no question that that's our money. That it, it, it's intended as a means of having one non regressive revenue source. Uh, otherwise, we're, we are dependent upon a regressive revenue source. We have an older town, we have an average median income of 50000 so that when property owners get hit with substantial 22% in the last four years, that this is against fixed incomes, a lot of people. Yeah. It, it's, it's devastating. So, so uh, uh, to me, <coughs> the, the, uh, Augusta can't balance its budget by pushing a tax increase on us. It's unfair. We are going to act as the voice of this community. We are going to lobby. We are going to make it be known that uh, this is money that we are entitled to. It's what makes us have the ability to control our affairs. We can be stable. We can have stable budgets because then we can say, no, we're not going to do this or do that because we can control the income side, the expense side. Uh, but the income side has, has been a real problem. So uh, we obviously want to know uh, if your view is that at the end of the day, would you vote to take <coughs> our money and pass, the, the, pass it on to us? We, we honestly, we want you to just tell us because we're going to be watching. <coughs> but we, uh, uh, and, and it certainly makes sense that the sooner we can get our answer, the sooner we can, I completely agree. Vice Chair's comments that mm -hmm. at least then we can try to organize a manner of being able to make do with the situation that's presented to us. Uh, so, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to. Um, I thought we were just going to go around and introduce ourselves. The, the points I have um, are he, here we have um, in Scarborough, we, the, Scar the people of Scarborough pay quite a bit in income taxes to the state and it seems like every year that goes by we get we're going to be getting less and less and less um, you know this town even though they think in augusta that we're, it's an influ influent town and there's a lot of money here there's still a lot of just regular working people that don't make a lot so and then we keep we're continually asked for more and more and more DOT, for an example, town of Scarborough takes care of all the roads now, plowing, salt, and sanding, um, a lot of ditching work, um, things that need to be done that the DOT just won't, won't do for us anymore. Um, we had three, three roads, three state DOT roads that uh, town of Scarborough actually went in and repaired them uh, to a higher standard than the state. And the state said, I'm sorry, um, you know, uh, these roads aren't high on the priority list. What's happened is you've got North Saco and other communities that have continuously built, built up their communities. And all these communities travel through Scarborough. Gorham does, um, you know, like I said, Saco, uh, Old Orchard Beach. They, they've built up and they're sending their traffic through here, yet they say, no, we're not going to give you any help on fixing these roads, um, you know, reimbursements less and less all the time. Um, we're asked to build our own schools and, and, and you know, uh, the, it was a large number of people that came out and voted said, yes, Scarborough does need a new school after repeated times of it being voted down. Finally, um, the citizens of Scarborough saw the need and once again, no help from the state. Okay, with the DOT, um, then they had the nerve, uh, whether it's a Governor LePage or how it happened, decide to say all of a sudden that they're going to take the truck registration fees away from Scarborough. Another, we, you know, with built, working on these roads and fixing them, that's something that we really depended on and needed. You know, uh, it may not have been a lot. I believe, uh, Tom, was it a million? I, forgive me, I don't remember the numbers. Roughly. Luckily, it didn't go through, but it, that was a proposal late but in the no, process. No, but I'm just saying, right. they, they, this is what we're threatened with all the time. Lo uh, loss of, I'm sorry, I didn't put that right. Maybe I'm getting a little emotional about it, but it seems like every time <laughs> there's something that's being tried, uh, you know, they're trying to take away something that the town needs so that we can 
make this all work because we can't keep going up on the taxpayers. It, they're, they're not happy as it is, mm -hmm. and um, it may it may be out of our hands. But what I what I'd like to hear um, tonight is what if. Scarborough sending all these tax dollars in an income tax. Where's it all going? And why are we being told that it's, you know, our revenue sharing is going to be lost or go down? What are we spending this money on? And why, you know, I, I meant um, it's, it's pretty much the point where I can see someday in the near future that Scarborough will be um, probably receiving very little, if any, funds from the state. And if that's the case, um, what's going to happen is, a, if I'm still on the council, is is going to have to be diminished services some ways, because there's a lot of folks that can't afford the taxes to continue going up. We had a circuit breaker program here mm -hmm. we run in Scarborough uh, to help out people that really need to pay their taxes, and of course the whole thing in Augusta. Um, you know that that was lost, and and so that affected our program also. So we're trying to figure out how we're going to reestablish it. Mm -hmm. But when you lose all these funds, like I said, you're going in the in the school. They they expect a certain standard. I hear time and time again, the school needs the money. The school needs the money. Well, you know, if there's only so much money to go around, the school needs it. That means it's going to come out of the fire department, police department, public works, and right here at town hall, people are going to be going home. And it's just is a threshold that the taxpayer is going to. This has always been told over and over again, and back way back with Tabor when they uh, had the the referendums on Tabor. There's a threshold that the taxpayer can take. And to me, uh, and you can ask the rest of the councils, I think we've pretty much reached it. So, like I said, um, if you in Augusta, if people in Augusta keep passing these unfunded mandates for the school, which I've heard of some, some um, of that go maybe happening in the future, we uh, there's very little for us to do. Um, well, the one I heard about, maybe you can answer this, was um, I heard that there may be a bill coming forward for um, preschool, un, you know, a funded preschool. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe one of you can enlighten me Senator on Senator Millett's the chair <laughs> of the education. Pass that to you. Well, that, <laughs> uh, maybe this is just gossip, but this is what I heard. This is what I was told. So, um, it, but... That, that's basically um, my my grief about what's been going on and anything that you know you can do to help the town is greatly appreciated. So let's hear from these can kids. I, yeah. we can didn't, I actually yeah. just since Absolutely. The, school, the unfunded mandate and the school fund yep. kind of rose to the top of those comments. <laughs> right. Maybe I can address that being the chair, co chair, mm -hmm. actually. Okay. Why don't we um, take, actually, what I'd like to just jump in is if yep. it might be helpful. Part of this is sort of yes, broadening sure. and keeping the communication. So, so I'd like to, once we do our introductions, I'd like you guys to know what committees we serve on, what that's because that's where we have most of our end. And you could, we're at, you're in a kind of a good place that all three of us serve on different committees, and so we have certain committee areas that we have more influence on, if you will, than others. And then there's the broad yeah. votes that we all get to have that we can also talk about those. But <coughs> it might be helpful for you to know, to, to identify who's the expert on different areas. <laughs> we don't have the whole legislature covered on our five, committee, <laughs> five committees, but we do have a pretty good, right. uh, a good uh, chunk. Uh, and, and it would be it's helpful for you to know Heather who to reach out here. to on different. Yeah, with Heather, we, we would have more so. So why don't you start with that, and then you can, and I'll tell what I do, and okay. then we can start in on trying to respond, I think. Okay. okay. So do you want me to just say yeah. what I'm on and then yeah. not respond to anything? No, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. I just okay. want them to know where it's coming from. <laughs> okay. um, so Rebecca Millett, and I, I am co-chair of the Education and Cultural Affairs Committee, and I also serve on taxation. Um, so there's a lot of these comments that were made that touch upon some things that, that I have been um, working with. I will say that because I chair education, the time that I spend in taxation is minimal at best um, because oftentimes we're meeting at exactly the same time. But I, just like today, I was running in between the two committees trying to, to be at the right place at the right time for those really critical discussions. Um, but 
I, I would like to um, comment a little bit about some of the stuff that's going around education. Okay. Um, last year, for the budget, uh, obviously, as you all know, the governor proposed a budget that was a significant cut to public mm -hmm. education. And in the education committee, the majority of us reported out to the Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee that, that we found that to be unacceptable and that not only did we want those cuts to be restored, but that we wanted um, the state to continue to move towards the 55%. Um, and if the state could not do that, then none of the monies that they had allocated towards special projects should be funded. It should go to those, that funding. Um, the Appropriations Committee heard that message quite clearly and negotiated a budget that, that did exactly that. Um, one of the things that we also said is we did not agree with the transference of retirement costs to local districts. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, during the negotiations, that was one of the things that, that <coughs> fell to the negative. But when they transferred those retirement costs to districts, they also funded the transferring mm -hmm. of that cost. So net-net, Scarborough actually did in receive increased funding, but it received the increased funding after the budgets were passed. And so we actually try to put a bill through at the very last minute to allow the districts to take that money and use it for the coming, uh, for the coming year. Unfortunately, it did not have enough support and it didn't pass. So there, is, there should be a pot of money now in your contingency or carry forward balance um, that can be utilized for this coming year. My hope is, is that um, the Appropriations Committee will remain true to the language that's in the budget to continue moving the state share towards 55%. Um, the message was heard loud and clear by pretty much everybody, and it had very strong support. So I, I expect that that will continue. Just, uh, incidentally, uh, do you know where we're at? We're not at 55. Do you have no. any <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're something like 46 or 47 percent. That's what I thought. I, I would, I, I, don't quote me on that. I'm not too sure exactly sounds, what it is. But it's not. Sounds right. It's sounds under 50. <clears throat> um, but. But there, within the budget that was passed last year, it was it gave us very. I think it was a one percent increase for each year. Now, as we are all aware, as you've all seen and commented on, uh, the budget process every year results in new decisions. Um, but I can assure you that, as co-chair of the education committee, I'm speaking very forcefully um, for on behalf of public school funding. I served on the school board in Cape Elizabeth for six and a half years. I was in your shoes going, why are we not finding out our final numbers until April or May when they know we have to go to referendum? And we have actually had this conversation in Augusta about is there a way that we can improve on this process? It's, I, my impression is only after having served in Augusta for a year that's probably reflective of whatever the budget that's been proposed by the governor and how and wherever the legislature is in terms of their approach. You pr pretty much could not have gotten more diametrically op opposed positions um, from what the governor presented to what a majority of, of the legislator really wanted to see happen. And because of that, it took a very long time to get people to move to a middle ground. Um, and unfortunately, it, it meant that the, the information just wasn't getting to anybody um, in a timely fashion. But I would say that I remember very distinctly under a different administration and different legislature, we were still waiting. Um, and I'm not sure I know what the answer is, but I, we do have representatives of MSMA, the Main School Management Association, the Main School Superintendent Association, in our committee room all the time. And we're always having that dialogue about what can we do um, one of the things that I thought of when I was on the school board is, is, you know, do we change the nature of our process here at the local level? Do we somehow try to move our discussions up earlier, um, not earlier, later, um, and, then, and then the voting and, and until the fall? I, mean, I don't, it's, it's really a conundrum. Um, but I'm very much aware of it. I, I know your pain. I've lived through it many, many times. It's like Groundhog Day every year. You're pulling mm -hmm. your hair out going, how can we be responsible? Um, 
One of the things that I did do when I, um, my, my first year there was to get a law passed that averages out state valuation for each community. Um, one of the things that has, the, the, the biggest thing that has an impact on how much a community gets is the state valuation. It's not student enrollment, it's not new uh, m mandates or anything like that. It's just simply the valuation number and how it relates to everybody else's valuation numbers. So you can get some really wide variances, not because of your own community, but because of other communities. Um, so we did pass a bill that will slowly put in place, because we, we didn't want to do it all at once. It will cause some drastic changes if we just said immediately it's going to be a three-year change. But we are going to be gradually working up to a three-year average over the next couple of years to hopefully smooth out some of these wild um, variations in state valuation. So that should be able to give at least the school districts an ability to forecast out a little bit about how much money they will be getting because of evaluation. Um, <clears throat> unfunded mandates. We are getting a report this session on unfunded mandates. I have it right here. Well, this is on the municipality. I don't know if there's a separate one for schools. Yes, there's going to be a new one. It has not been released yet. Um, the Department of Education is due to report it out on January 10th. Um, and so the, the Education Committee hopefully will be getting it at that time. Recognizing that there has been a change in leadership in the Department of, of, of Education, I'm not going to be, you know, we're not going to hold them strictly to that date, but we certainly hope that that's the case, and then we will be reviewing it. And, that we'll, and we have the ability to report out a bill from this evaluation if we need to make any changes. Um, we are not allowed to pass any new unfunded mandates right. unless we get two-thirds vote of the legislature. Okay, if, if, this, if the, uh, education, the education committee feels that a new program is really important, it needs to attach funding to it. And it needs to go through appropriations and be put into the budget. Otherwise, it cannot happen unless there's a two-thirds vote. So um, the, the message is very loud. It's always in, in, at the epicenter of any of our discussions. We have a number of people who have been on school boards or are teachers or administrators who are very well aware of the demands that are already on our schools. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very cautious about adding anything new. Having said that, there is a discussion about um, early childhood education um, because the Evidence that's out there right now through brain science is very clear. The biggest bang for your buck is the earliest years of a child. That's right. And one of the things that we struggle with as a state is that only 26% of our kids are being given these opportunities. And if they fall behind in those years, we have, we are, ne it's almost next to impossible to get that child to catch up. Um, we are also at the same time looking at the funding formula, the EPS formula, and uh, are likely to make changes to it. And one of the things that we're talking about is including in that funding formula some additional support for early childhood education. Um, and there actually is money for early childhood education. It's currently being provided at the same rate as the K through, the K through two uh -huh. rate. So if Scarborough has an early childhood, all they have to do is count the pupils and put it in to the state and they actually get funded for that. So that's actually not an example of an unfunded mandate because is there is funding currently available. Fully funded? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the likelihood of that EPS model being, funding formula actually being reworked anytime soon? Um, well, Good. if you had asked me this morning as I was driving up to Augusta, I would have said none because I, well, I was hearing rumors that people were pretty down on it. And then by the end of our meeting today, we had unanimous consent that we want to move forward. Hmm. Interesting. So um, we're going to do something. What it is, it's still unclear. There's very strong support for doing more around early childhood. There's very strong support about addressing the economically disadvantaged students. And there's strong support for somehow um, developing a model that will provide 
quality professional development. And we're, we're kind of working around what does that actually mean because we're aware that professional development can also be a, a complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mean to minimize the importance of those three things you just mentioned, but how about equity of the, the distribution method of well, that's the uh, equity back? That's not the, fun, that's not the EPS formula. That's the allocation methodology. I beg your and pardon. that's a separate, and that's, but it's been part of our discussion and we, um, so there was a report done by right. Picus and Associates and they actually said that what we are currently doing in Maine is pretty good. <laughs> um, and as um, Representative Cornfield said today in our meeting, the fact that all of the rural districts think that the urban districts are getting more money and the urban districts think that the rural districts are getting more money is probably an indication that the system is balanced because everybody thinks they're not getting enough money. Um, we looked at the possibility of changing the, the allocation methodology to include an income factor and that actually made it worse. It didn't, it didn't make it more fair, it made it less fair. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, my observation, I'm not looking at how we compare to others. Uh, I just know what's happening to us. And we lose about a million every year. We so. seem to be losing it at uh, pretty predictable clips. Mm -hmm. and well, that's all I know. Um, again, you have, hopefully you, will actually, you actually probably got more money this year. It just didn't but, come uh, with that original yep. uh, notice because of the way right. the budget transpired and again if you can hold our feet to the fire to make sure that we continue to move to 55 percent that's going to make the big difference it's not it's really not about allocating at this point it's about state meeting the expectation of funding education at 55 percent um, you know we base it we base allocation on valuation of property and the majority of the country, of, uh, the majority of states throughout the country do the same. There is no magic f allocation formula. Um, but the difference with Maine and New Northern New England generally, I think, is that uh, we're almost entirely reliant with, with the property tax as our other funding source locally. Whereas the rest of the country, many times lo local governments have other funding streams, whether it's a local option revenue, uh, sales tax or some other more robust uh, uh, So that gets me out of the sharing. realm of the Education Committee, <laughs> okay? And then that puts me into the Taxation Committee. Terrific. Um, well, I wanted to know where we all come from. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it covered. Oh, uh, well, so, yes. Um, right, so, so the first thing that, that, that we can do is move the state to 55% because we're not even where we're supposed to be at. And then what kind of flexibility do the lo local governments have in finding alternative revenue streams to fund their 45 percent? Um, that's educating Maine kids into a pool and the state will fund 55 percent. That's not to say that Scarborough's education costs will be funded at 55 percent. That's correct. And that's the painful truth. And ours is, I think, something in the mid-teens, 16, 17 percent. Cape Elizabeth's is at 7 or 8 percent. Right. So I just wanted to be, make sure everyone understood when we're saying 55, we will never see anything near was, that. It's a statewide. There state was a wide. very conscious discussion over a seven-year period of time back in 19... Uh, early 2000s or when this whole EPS model was developed and the allocation methodology was developed. It was all on the heels of that same 55% um, mandate, as I recall. Well, hmm. the, the discussion around how do you, so if, so once, once they developed a model to say this is what education should cost, then they had to then say how do we know how much we give to each um, community, recognizing that not every community has the same ability to pay. Okay, so while I understand that Scarborough has residents that aren't wealthy or that are middle class and lower middle class and poor, which is the same for any community, Cape Elizabeth is the same, South Portland is the same, we have a diverse group of residents and um, but the, there are other communities that have higher proportions 
of poorer mm -hmm. or lower middle, lower middle class. And so if we believe that's important for all, all children in Maine to obtain a strong education, how do you allocate the state money said it's supposed to go to education and they decided that it had to be through property valuation. Mm. Now there's a recognition that um, there are communities who are high in property value but not necessarily in wealth and how do, you, how do you accommodate for that? Well one of the ways that they do that is within the funding formula there is additional funding for students who are economically disadvantaged. So for every student who receives free and reduced lunch, they get an additional 0.15% of the normal student rate as a way to kind of boost up the funding that goes to that district to help. Um, and there are some, there's small district adjustments, so there are a number of adjustments that have been made to try to address that. There's also Title I monies, which mm. has not been working 100%, uh, but we're, we're going to be dealing with that when we, when we review the EPS model. Um, the, other, the other discussion that we've been having in education is that, and what came out of the report is, that the circuit breaker is really an effective way of helping to further adjust for the inconsistencies within a population of a community. So if you're high in property value, but you've got a number of people are really struggling to deal with their uh, monthly cash flow, the circuit breaker program will be there to boost them up while the rest, while the community as a whole is still being said, you're, you're, you have an ability to pay. Well, not everybody in my community has an ability to pay. We need to, we need to look out for that. Um, and so, we are going to be addressing that in education through a bill, but then we're going to re-refer it to taxation. <laughs> well, I'll actually get to then work on it again with my colleagues in that committee. Um, so that's kind of where we're going. Can I <clears throat> interrupt or take a second here? I, I think I heard Amy say that you had to leave. Do you want to have the floor? Because I'm not leaving until we're done, and, I, and I'm looking at the clock, and I really sure. think given everything that we've heard, it would be great if we could, you know, you had a chance to have the floor, don't you think, before yeah. you have to go? I'm so sorry, I did not know No, that's all right. Well, well I mean, I just, I have to be down the road at 7.30 yep. or so, but I mean, I can be a few minutes late. It's not, um, but thank you, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just did, I did want to pass these out. Um, they're preliminary reports. One is on a mandate working group, and it's unfunded mandates to municipalities. So this might be something that, um, and again, it's a preliminary report, but you might find it interesting reading. <clears throat> I can't say I've read it myself yet, but um. And then they also had a nonprofit tax review task force, which Rebecca might know something about. And this is, again, a preliminary report for them. Um, so those are going to be a couple of tools in the toolbox that hopefully you'll have. Um, Maybe not for this budget season, but for the next budget season. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know too much about taxation because I am not on tax committee or appropriations. Um, you all know probably that I did work on completely overhauling our tax um, system as part of a working group that was um, sort of private and became public. and. Um, that was, that was the gang of the list. Yeah. <laughs> that unfortunately didn't get very far. Um, you know, it's my personal belief that until we do something radical like that, the state's going to continue to have these issues in funding. Um, and of course, my recommendation in terms of when you're putting your budget together, I know um, Jessica was asking essentially, but. Um, is to plan for the worst and hope for the best. So um, right now, as it stands, there has been an increase in revenue, but there's also at least a $120 million deficit already in Department of Health and Human Services. So when Richard asks, or um, James asks where the money is going, that's mm -hmm. where the money's going, um, unfortunately. and. It's also my opinion that um, Cumberland and York County pretty much subsidize the rest of the state of Maine. And um, from my work on 
the um, Labor, Commerce, Research, and Economic Development Committee, I can tell you that it's it's just sad, <laughs> I guess, um, that our state is in the state that it's in. And, you know, um, we have seen um, a huge decrease in a lot of our, our big industries. Um, and we've seen a lot of, you know, we've just had 200 people laid off in Lincoln, which was kind of the, the crown jewel in the pulp and paper industry in northern Maine, and now there are 200 people that don't have jobs. Um, so I wish I had something happier to say, but mm, it's, no, it's just, just so you can't share revenue that doesn't <clears> exist. <throat> and, um, and I know that we've had to tighten our belts on the state level, and you guys have had to tighten your belts. Can I, um, can I ask yep. something about that? I know I come from a place of looking at uh, the state budget, and I have to ask, you know, when we're weighing giving breaks to corporations <clears throat> versus helping out the mm -hmm. taxpayer, you know, we don't do a very good job or haven't been as a state. I think we've been paying too much attention to so-called, I'll, I'll call it corporate welfare. Um, and we need to be focusing more on the tax, the taxpayers, the real taxpayers of the, of the state, and making sure that we make some, some switch there too to help out the middle class. Well, um, so where do you stand on that? Well, there, the committee um, over the summer and into the fall um, that was tasked from the tax committee with reviewing um, tax expenditures, like you're talking about, and coming up with forty million dollars in savings, failed to do. That's right. Anything. So um, I was following that community. Un unfortunately, I think what they found is that, you know, while you might call it corporate welfare, the reality is that if you take those tax benefits away, a lot of jobs go away. And so you risk that. And do we want to risk that? Um, you know. But have we, but have we, I know there was some talk of, of um, Last year, and I'm thinking of these pine, the pine tree uh, districts, or whatever the heck they're mm -hmm. calling them, uh, business districts. Yeah. Of, and, and I'm a business person, and I, I have no problem, you know, giving businesses, you know, tax credits, whatever they need to do, as long as they're creating jobs. But there was some talk that it didn't seem like they were very effective and weren't creating the jobs. So, is something being done in this session to look at that and make sure that. We are creating jobs because, yeah, we need jobs in the state. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think, I mean, that's something that's ongoing sort of review. And the problem is that it's a lot of those things are, are really hard to get firm numbers on. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of anecdotal sorts of things. But um, I think that there's also, you know, been talk about a proposal to create um, some special tax zones in some of the poorer, more rural areas mm -hmm. of the state, mm -hmm. and hopefully draw industry there so that people will have jobs and they won't be um, dependent upon state resources. And, and the only reason I go down that is because, again, looking at Scarborough, because <laughs> that's why we're here, mm -hmm. is, you know, this, uh, I was in high school you, you, so many years ago when they started the uh, revenue sharing. And revenue sharing was created as a as an offset to the new t the new state income tax, which was implemented, I believe, in the late '60s. And revenue sharing was a way to help the regressivity of the property tax. And again, my concern as a as a town councilor is the regressive nature of the property tax because we do have high valuation. I'm a real estate broker, and we do have high property valuation in the town of Scarborough. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can't get a, you can't buy a decent house for under 200000 in the town of Scarborough, to be honest with you. Um, but you've got a lot of people on fixed incomes <coughs> or, you know, have lived in Scarborough forever, um, and their incomes are such that they can't afford the, the, re, the regressive nature of the property tax. So, you know, I'd like to see us, I, in an ideal world, our revenue sharing would be the way it should be, and the legislature would stop rating it. Uh, and school sharing would be at 55% like it should be and, you know, whatever. Um, um, 
and and part of why it, I just I'm I'm just hopeful that all of you can be looking at you know the big picture too about well who is paying taxes and who isn't in this state and is it fair? Yeah, I just don't understand why the 55 percent and the revenue sharing isn't respected for the law that it represents. <coughs> why is it just ignored and then treated like? A default item that can be robbed to, to solve other tax problems. Um, why wouldn't the legislature uh, uh, and the governor just say those are those are fixed? Those are commitments that have historically been made for the for good and sufficient reasons to spread uh, a, a tax for the towns over uh, so it's less regressive. And so now. <coughs> It isn't a matter that the revenue isn't there to share. It's that the legislature and the governor doesn't Just have the not. courage to balance the budget based on the law. I don't, That's the way I, I see it. I don't think we've ever reached 55% in, in the entire. Very close. We were at 52% at one point. Right, but it's never, what I'm saying, it's <clears throat> never been 55%. Right. That was sort of a goal that was it's set out. Set in law, but it's supposed <clears throat> to be. Right. A citizen initiated law, I might add. Yeah, here's well, what's so, so I don't get it why any legislature or governor would think he can just take that money. It's stealing. <laughs> it's just plain stealing because you're not willing to do the job that you've got, which is balance the budget. You can do it. There are revenue sources that are available to you that are not available to us. We, our hands are tied. And I but suspect a, a fair amount of the, or some of the, the issue we find ourselves in at the state level is some of the recent tax cuts. I mean, the revenues oh, have gone right. down by, right. by choice, frankly. By Actually, our tax income policy. revenues, income taxes are up. Income tax collection revenue is up. But not the rate. But not the rate, right. Right, yeah, but you're the, referring to the cuts that were made in 2011. Yeah, right, I mean, undoubtedly that has to have an effect on the state's ability to pay well, its bills. M Mr. Yeah. Chair, can I, can I jump in too yeah. and ask, one of the things that we didn't get when we sat down was how much time you allotted for this. And, and my, when I got the email, I thought it was, let's open a dialogue between the, the local and the state. Right. Um, and one of the things sure. that seems to be happening is this, this, we're getting into the real specifics of all of you becoming a, a subcommittee of the, you know the legislature and I'm happy to do that in terms of communication over the course of the, the session through April and, I, and if I'm elected again I, I next year I think it's excellent that you guys reached out to us and I really think uh -huh. for me that's the big focus of tonight that I had hoped to have an opportunity to, is to hope you know put faces to the names open the channel between Scarborough and Augusta which you know and, and I think right. we certainly the three of us have the message that revenue sharing is top and, and that's why it's at the top of the handout that I haven't even handed out yet because we didn't get to it. But I want to be con conscious of the uh, allotted right. time that you folks have because right. I still really haven't weighed in much. And I do yep. have some uh, handout and some things I want to say. Okay. Um, but we could make it till mi we could talk till midnight. Oh, and I'm talking about more issues. <laughs> but, um, but one of the things I wanted to, I just wanted to make sure that we all, you know, understood that we, we what we want and the three of us, one of the, the message I want to get is. When we go back up there tomorrow and th throughout until April, the short session, one of the things we'll be, I'll certainly be, speak for myself, I'm going to be telling my colleagues, Scarborough's pissed. They're really Dude. ripped that we cut their <laughs> revenue. Good. No, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. This, right. That kind of message yep. resonates stronger than anything else in the State House. You get, you get the, it, it, you guys represent your community. We really do. You were elected to represent the whole community. So you have a powerful voice with the three of us and with, with Heather. Um, and we're going to take that message back, regardless of whatever else gets said or how much we get into the weeds of um, the allocation and all the rest right. of it. The message that they'll hear from us loud and clear is Scarborough is damn mad and they're not going to take it anymore. You want, you want the revenue no, cuts to stop and you want the money back. And, and I mean, that's the message I'm going to be getting back there. And, and that's, and to add to that, I, you know, I was part of the gang that put a lot of the revenue sharing back in that finally did come through the budget, um, as were you. And, and Amy, I think, did vote finally for the, to override the governor's uh, original budget, uh -huh. um, to override the second, second budget, rather, that put two-thirds of the money back. So what you have in the room with you is sort of preaching to the choir. From last session, we put as much money back. It would have been a lot worse. If, the original yep. budget. So we did put back some. Not, I know that doesn't, you know, that's not all warm and fuzzy, but it did happen. And that's one of the political realities that those of us who go up there face. So that we, uh -huh. and, and I, 
so now that I have the floor, I would like to pass out these handouts because <laughs> because there's more. There is going to be legislation. The, the the tax expenditure or loophole task force that that Amy referenced was supposed to. That was a, a poison pill that was put into the last legislature. That if this work group uh, didn't go forth and find forty million dollars of loopholes, guess what? It was going to come out of revenue sharing again. So that $40 million is sitting up there as a sort of Damocles hanging over you guys and us. And if, so what the one of the proposals in the legislature that, that I've handed out here that is just the ink is still drying, yeah, is um, to, to find another way to, to fund that $40 million so it doesn't have to hit you guys, right. all the communities, that uh -huh. $40 million. That, that, that sword is still hanging up there. So we're, that's what we're dealing with up there. And that's why it's timely that we're meeting with you. And uh, you know, I'm hearing from Gorman's Westbrook, which I also represent. All the communities, all of us, all of the state are hearing from you, and, you sh and we should be. Yeah. You're doing the right thing, from, in my, from my perspective, by having us here, by reading us the Riot Act. And, and you know, you're the mouthpieces for, for, for Scarborough. So I think it's great that you're doing it. But the other thing um, is that in the email, I, th I think it was, you know, what are the legislative priorities? So I wanted to touch a little bit on that because um, because I did go to some effort to put this together, and we have, I've bulletized what I think the, at least the Democratic priorities from my perspective are, main care expansion or, or health care, that's going to be a big bill. That's That and revenue sharing, that's why I put those two first. Those are huge issues for everybody in the state of Maine, including residents of Scarborough. Um, the main care ride system is, is it presumably an issue. Nobody's mentioned it here tonight, but there must be Scarborough residents who have some concerns yes. about that. Oh, yeah. So we're well, well aware of it. It's one of the first uh, bills will be taking up, um, and and uh, Heather serves on the uh, Health and Human S Services Committee. So you have a pipeline to directly to that committee through Heather, and I think that's terrific for this. And I won't speak for her; she's not here. But yeah, I think it's important that you understand that the biggest influence you can have is through the committee process. You can have the influence on the whole legislature, but the fact that you have education and tax, labor, commerce, research, and economic development, health and human services, and I chair the Environment and Natural Resources Committee, and I also serve on agriculture, conservation, and forestry. So any of the bills that are in front of any of those committees, you got really strong eyes and ears looking out for Scarborough. Um, but we also have the big issues of uh, health care, revenue sharing I should have put first, but uh, as I know it's first in your mind. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to support this bill that will lock in the money for revenue sharing. The communities will get the revenue sharing. This will be a change in how that's done. And so I wanted to bring it to you. This is, it's pretty new. It's going to be contentious like everything is up there. It's a two-party system, essentially, and we do fight. But ultimately, at the end of the day, at the end of the session, you, negotiations happen in the 11th hour that bring parties together to either pass a 50 percent or to, or to come up with an override. And that's what we'll do, be doing again. So you guys have to track us and, and hound us and whip us like bulls, bulldogs until <laughs> April 16th. Really, well, April is going to be the time. I think you need to. I mean, I think that's what your responsibility is and what I want you guys to do. Mm -hmm. I do. I think I like hearing from people that don't agree with me, the people who do, right. because I represent all of them. And I think that's what you're asking us to do. And I, I've heard from this committee, uh, this council, that you want revenue sharing back. You want it back where it was. And I've back heard that loud. Is that what the you want all of it back. Right. This, pr this, proposal, this right. specific right. one is, is, to, is to cover the $40 million that's mm -hmm. still hanging point, over At this point, I would be happy just not to be losing exactly. more. Well, the, the, at least have right. you know, the minimum the stability. of what we last well, We're year. looking for stability. <laughs> yeah. right. Revenue sharing was designed to return 5% of a combination of sales and income tax through a formula right. system back. Mm -hmm. We're somewhere in the low 2% range it's about 45 percent funded right now so are you and it'll go lower if the 40 million isn't found uh, that that's what this shows these these so when you say restoration table. back to prior year or, or back to the in in, in this session the best we're likely to okay. get is to not have the another 40 million cut from all communities in the state that's the that's okay the in, the immediate concern oh, yeah. um we did i think we did a pretty good job of putting back two-thirds of the cuts that were to happen that doesn't may not sound great to you guys because you still had to make up the difference, but at least we did that much. And and credit to the moderates in the middle that you know switched their vote and supported the two thirds override. That's what got it there. And without that, we wouldn't have even what you did have. So that's we're going to need. That's how it happens up there. Right. 
communities, the citizens, they need to reach out. Some people are very hardened on one side or the other. They're not going to switch their votes. Those of us who will switch our votes are the ones that need to hear from you. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, that's what I wanted to get a chance to say. And I, I thought, um, I, again, I said in the email that I read, I thought you wanted to hear from us what we, our priorities are going to be. So um, that, no, uh, you can read the rest of them. I won't read them out. And then I've got the bills that I have in front of the list. Can I ask a question on timing? You mentioned April. So as I understand it, the, the governor's been very clear. He's not going to present a supplemental budget. Is that, is that correct? That's yes. what we've heard, heard too, yes. So I, I presume under Maine Constitution, you, the legislature will have to yes. consider that on themselves. And it must be, I presume, you're looking for a two-thirds veto-proof vote, uh, given the governor's statements to date. Mm -hmm. As near as I can tell, you're looking at an 80 to $100 million gap in this budget. Um, and I can break out probably more than that yeah well, yes. I'm not even mentioning million 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 just in I'm, not even, I'm not even counting that frankly okay. so that really okay. scares me um, <laughs> but at the same time we had good forecast news from the revenue forecasting group I right. think it was 28 million dollars yep. up for the first quarter uh, you know if that trends throughout the fiscal year uh, it could be as much as a hundred million uh, maybe that's over optimistic and I know folks in Augusta will tell you don't spend it before it's right. in but <clears> nonetheless I bring that up because it's almost instant insult to injury. That's uh, predominantly sales tax. That's sales tax revenue, predominantly, isn't it? Yes. Well, sales and income both. Income is up too. Even better. To my point with revenue sharing, it's really insult to injury. If you've taken that money away from us and now there's yeah. there's excess money, why in the world wouldn't that be simply funneled back to us through the revenue system, the uh, revenue sharing system? Be because of the. Um, overruns in health and human services. But forgive me for being so blunt. That's your problem, not ours. Right. I mean, I, and I don't, Perform. forgive me for saying that to you. You're the one who's sitting in front of you. I, I guess that's the attitude. Maybe that's the takeaway is that um, I, I appreciate you've got a challenging job to do, but so do we. Yes, and, we do. And don't make your problems our problems. It's just that's it's the just message. Transferring the tax to us. Right. That's such a cop out. Yeah. A great big change on a one-on-one It is. That's uh, just shifting the uh, totally tab. Yeah. Well, again, we've heard that message. I don't. I don't think it's in fairness to the three of us. We're here. We've heard it. It's not productive to to sort of beat the horse. No, no. no. It. Um, but but I, I I mean we have to. Again, I'll say again. I I'm not saying that as a criticism. I think we have to hear it. I think it's valuable that we, that you reached out to us. I want to keep doing this. Okay. Um, it's it is work for us. We're we're we've had long days um, starting at four or five a.m. But it's this is what we're here for. It's what we got elected to do. How, how can and we be helpful to the three of you moving forward? Uh, stay in tune with, find out, get, get access to the legislative website and look at the bills that that affect. So you can take this. Um, it's now Senate Paper three seventeen. So right under where it says legislative document. If you go on um, main.gov main and right. find right. the legislature and find these documents, you can track when the public uh -huh. hearings are, when the work sessions are. I know. Involve yourselves. I know you know the process well, Jean Marie. So involve yourselves starting that. now. Educate yep. yourselves as to when the <clears throat> public hearings are, because the public hearing, that'll be first. Not just this bill, other right. bills that affect. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, and I think a lot of it is just staying informed. I would like to testify to the Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee, yeah. and testify to the Taxation Committee, mm -hmm. and testify to, what, to, to those committees that are going to be yeah. the most in, impactful to, to mm -hmm. the issues that you're dealing with. Um, it does make a difference. If three people show up to testify on a bill, yeah. versus 100, versus 200, the message, the impact of that message magnifies. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. would say, if this is really so critical, visit Augusta. Um, I do believe that they are going to be holding public hearings on the, on the recommend, I think it's just the recommendations of the Office of Policy and Management which is basically another curtailment, proposed yeah. curtailment for this 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 year, um, and in within that recommendation is a curtailment of education of roughly seven to nine million dollars. I can't remember. Nine and a half is what I heard. 
Nine and a half? Right. I, and I, I honestly don't know how Scarborough is affected by that. But Well, it's nine and a half out of the pot of education money. Um, but, you know, again, just so you know, on the Education Committee, we will also be <coughs> communicating our dismay with that recommendation because that wasn't the charge. Right. The charge was to find efficiencies. It wasn't to put in place a curtailment. The, the only other thing I would say is keep an ear out for casino money to education. Casino m revenues have gone up higher than they expected, mm -hmm. and money should be going directly to the districts. Um, this is money that's not supposed to reside with the Department of Education. It's supposed to go to the local districts. Um, we're, I'm trying to kind of keep track of it, but also if the questions kind of bubble up from the schools to the department, then they're going to be on notice that people are paying attention. So that can also go to help out with your, with your funding of your budgets. Now, I yeah. just wanted to say one thing. Well, I appreciate your, uh, your service yeah. up there. I've been up testifying in front of committees before, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I thought being a counsel was bad. I mean, I think you guys pull some all night. You start in the morning, and wow. So I appreciate your service. Um, you know, being here in the local community, we hear from our constituents, and they have all these questions for us that we can't answer you know state questions and I say call your representative you know call you know uh, they, they can tell you better but from what I'm hearing uh, what I had a discussion with uh, Heather um, you don't hear a lot from constituents well to, senators we cover we have 38,000 so we probably right. hear uh, percentage wise we right. probably hear from more like in my case three communities so yeah. I don't know I've never been a rep I don't know what I'd say, from my perspective, we do not hear a lot. lot. No, See, and honestly. that's a problem. They, they, they expect uh, the councils to answer their People questions. Mm -hmm. Where are all our state tax dollars going? And People we can't answer understand. that. You know, they want to know. I mean, like we do pie charts. Uh, you know, when we're doing our budget, you know, uh, the people in the they want to see what. I mean, go online, but they don't. They just don't seem to do it and see what <clears throat> the money's being spent on. Yeah. It depends what you mean by a lot. So for, to give numbers, I'd say I get yeah. um, an average of two or three phone calls a week yeah. and probably, uh, depend. well, right now it's lighter, but in the mm -hmm. heat of the right. um, session when we're in the thick of public hearings and work sessions, I probably get 100 or so emails a day around the district mm -hmm. yeah. and, well, and also outside the district on specific issues. But within the district, it's probably... 25 to 30 emails a day on issues that affect folks I had in the district. 750 emails by the end of the session. And yeah, so going, we do hear from people. I was going through every day trying to clear uh, answer citizen contact. So yeah. there are people mm -hmm. engaging, but it depends on the issue. Yeah. Right. And right. it might be it might be committee related. So you all like you know I hear yeah. I don't hear as much from constituents mm -hmm. of my district as as much as I do from about bills in my committee. Yeah, so, sure. <clears throat> right. but I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty accessible. I mean, right. my, yeah. I, so feel free to You're give people my number time. even, you know, I mean, because it, sometimes they just don't know how to even look up or, I mean, I'm in the phone book, but I right. don't know why. But. Right. <laughs> in terms I don't of know. Yeah. accessibility and dialogue and whatnot, I, I think on behalf of the council, I can offer these, you know, town hall facilities, should you want to, you know, have town halls or, meetings or you oh, know, meet you. your constituents mm -hmm. um, it might be important for you to get out um, you cover three different towns get out in each of those towns to make yourself accessible to yeah. them Ho and, and we do too yeah. Yeah. yeah we do that and the turnout is very yeah, it's low. low yeah I hear more via email than right. anything else and I actually hear more from citizens than I do from work I do on committee and really yeah. well that's interesting I do oh. um, I have a very motivated population. <laughs> <laughs> but we share, we share some constituents, we, we so do, that's but, funny. But uh, the South Portland Cape Elizabeth community is very, very involved and yeah. pays very close attention. Um, so I get, I get a pretty substantial number of emails on some of the bigger issues like um, health care expansion, um, circuit breaker, the ride share program. I heard, a little, I heard from a lot of people mm. who are really struggling South Portland people. Uh, yeah, yeah it was very difficult so and that was a national I mean that I, hopefully that's but I, I hope one thing I don't think that got out into the media very well is that 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 was actually dictated federally 
it, mm -hmm. it wasn't a decision that the state decided to just go with you know one contract but I, I feel like that you know, well it was a decision made to, yeah. in order to comply with federal exactly. requirement and that right. was this and that mm -hmm. was the contract yeah. selected but right. one of the three yeah but um that's had a big problem yep. right yeah. could I just ask a final question I um, the town clerk has, has shown me some new legislative um, district maps mm -hmm. so those boundaries have changed and they mm -hmm. appear to have changed pretty dramatically here that's and awesome. I suspect the same is true in other places uh, although I lost some of Scarborough Oh, you too. Yeah, but I got it. So how does the, how does all of that roll out to the public and the the electorate so they know uh, that they're in a new district? Uh, do you have any sense of that? Well, <laughs> is that uh, is that going to be a local responsibility to tell people? Oh, all of a sudden you're in a different legislative that, district that, than you were. It's before. a really good question. Yeah. And we should we'll cool ask the Secretary of State because mm -hmm. that's the department that okay. should be dealing with that. Yeah. Um, and when does that take effect? It's right now. Right now. So no. Well, no, 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 in the no. next, the next election, election cycle. cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is starting now. Yeah. Which is starting. Well. November. So the next election in November, anyone that's in a new district, in other words, somebody that's it's kind of time. on. Yeah, but it's, is it's, when yes. Else? It's now because it, it, people are be campaigning. Done. Well, if you're campaigning or, or yeah. candidates filing or whatever. Right. Yeah, I, have to, I guess my point, I, I, I don't know the answer, so whatever yeah. help you could give would be great. Yeah. And um, the sooner we can kind of get on that, the better. If we mm -hmm. wait until September, it's probably going to be. Yeah, Scarborough had to actually go, and we're going to have three, three house districts now okay. right. that will be sharing. With well, them. one of the one of them shared with Coral. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. We'll we'll definitely um, contact the secretary and see what he has to say. But there'll be fewer fewer people in the second Senate district, right? There's there's a larger share of Scarborough now going into what's considered. Senator District Boyle's six. seat now, yeah. Yeah. So, it's <laughs> it changed all over the state. No, I mean I don't think there was any district that didn't change. Well, if you think it was big here, I, I, <clears throat> I, I, I lost Westbrook mm -hmm. and gained Why Buxton. Did they do it? Oh, Ten oh, years. Oh. So census. Census. Uh, it's based on census. Yeah. Well, part of Westbrook, yeah. Yeah. So uh, a few streets squiggled here and there on, in Scarborough, but yeah. I lost the whole town over there. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's I know that's what could happen. Most, mm. most of Scarborough, all of Gorham and all of Buxton make up the new large Senate seat. And then there's some of coastal, sort of my side of town, South Portland, Cape Elizabeth side that Great. stays in Senator Millett's seat. That's right. You were on the committee. Yes. What was the whole idea <laughs> of, of redistricting? Well, it's just done by census. It has to so, be done every ten years. Yeah, I every get you. yeah, and it's a it was a bipartisan mm -hmm. process and um, approved mm -hmm. all around. It, it has to be done to, because each district has to have a um, so matching population um, plus or minus five percent. Right. I think it is throughout the state. You. Yeah, yep. there's like a target. Well, people number. move like a lot of people are moving from northern Maine to southern Maine. It changes. Yeah. The northern Maine districts got bigger geographically, and the southern Maine ones. Essentially, got smaller to have the same 38 or so thousand people in the Senate and roughly 6,000. Well, Scarborough's population in just 10 years changed. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh. Is that what you said? Senate, Senate uh, districts are 38 ish? You might have the, Do you have the numbers 16? off the top of your head? It's around 38,000 in for Senate yeah, and so. 5,800 or 6,000. 36 ish. Yeah. Huh. For House. Uh, I was going to say 58, voters. I think. Well, if, if someone could get back to me, uh, yep. we certainly want to do mm -hmm. our part locally Absolutely. to get that word out. I just don't want to wait too late. Yep. Um, That'd be good. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you for listening much. to Very us. Much. And maybe we can do it again soon. <laughs> okay. May I suggest just a three, four minute recess? Just yeah, we're going to take sure. five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. We're not misbehaving. Okay, this is part two of uh, Scarborough Town Council workshop, and the next subject will be goal setting for the year. And um, I guess I'll start with Tom. Can sure. set the thing up, and then uh, we'll start with um, Councillor uh, Donovan this time. We'll go the other uh, way. 
So just a couple of introductory comments. Um, you know, I'm pleased to help kind of facilitate this for you. Tonight I'll, I'll be your scribe, so I'll, I'll record your ideas up on the board here. Uh, I sent some um, suggested uh, ways of moving through this process to you, and I'm certainly pleased to, to follow that or, or another um, proposal if anyone has one. But what I've suggested is that you all come up with five or so goals. Uh, we can go around the room if you like or you can exhaust them all at once. I'll get them recorded. I think you'll find fairly quickly that there's um, um, the, the common phrase will be, oh, Bill had mine. So the, I, I suspect there'll be a, a fair amount of um, repeats. And, and that's to be encouraged. Uh, or not, uh, Don't be surprised. What I would suggest you do in that event is kind of um, add to it and further expand if that's the case. Uh, so I'll record all of the ideas up and we'll tape them up around the room. And then um, as a way of kind of ranking them, I can uh, give you all a different color marker and you can assign a number of votes. I suggest you all have 10 votes at your disposal. Um, you could assign all 10 votes to one goal if you think it's that important or distribute them uh, however you wish. And then we'll simply uh, tally them up and uh, we can talk about the short list. I think 10 is a reasonable goal. Uh, to get to, but it could be a little more, a little less. Most importantly, they need to be your goals and something that's attainable in the next 12 months or so. It's probably 10 months by the time you take the <coughs> start of the year and the end of the year out. So uh, just be mindful of that. So I'm pleased, um, and as uh, the Chairman suggests, <coughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, as you would expect, my number one was responsible budgeting. Uh, and uh, the, the kind of the sub points of focus under that were what we did tonight, be an advocate for the town with our legislative delegation and do that on two levels. One would be the revenue sharing issue and the other was giving towns flexibility to raise revenue through means other than property taxes. So uh, those were the two of the things we talked about uh, 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 employ, uh, under responsible budgeting, employ conservative assumptions <coughs> to avoid surprises. Uh, uh, that was something that Amy actually uh, did. Uh, appropriate. Uh, limit both spending and the tax rate to an agreed percentage proportionally shared by all departments unless good cause shown. Um, analyze the capital cost budget to avoid budget bubbles and advance plan for loss of revenue sharing. So we've got, we have risks ahead of us. I mean, I think the uh, road to hell is paved with good intentions, but I would say there's a strong likelihood that we won't do well with our, our sources of revenue, which should plan for the worst uh, and sort of move in that direction. If we get surprised, that's wonderful. But uh, um, I think the capital, long-term capital budget uh, uh, involves expenses that People are saying, well, I've been waiting and I've been waiting. I think you have to look at that and just say, well, how are we going to get these bubbles so they don't pop up and, and create problems? Because given, given the trend of the last four years and what I expect for the next several years, it's going to be tough sledding for all of us to deal with budgets. Uh, dialogue with department heads about ideas from productivity and economy uh, uh, initiatives. So that's. That's all sort of subheadings under responsible budget. I think you're talking faster than he can write. You are. <laughs> that's, that's okay. So that was all captured under this notion yeah. of responsible budgeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, the three I was able to catch up with you on were uh, conservative right. assumptions. Um, you talked about having some definitive some target for spending and tax rate. Right. And advocate for, our, for ourselves, but also plan for the worst. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, some kind of... Uh, 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 reviewing the capital budget uh, so that we sort of can plan for dealing with <coughs> risk factors of people's expectation that we're going to buy this or build a that when it, it may be very impractical that we can actually do these things. So I, I think people have a right when they put all this time into long range planning to know that maybe things, maybe the, the world has changed a little bit. Mm. So that just, uh, and then it, dialogue with department heads about ideas for productivity and economies. Uh, that was uh, the last of those sub points <coughs> of responsible budget. Uh, the second item I have was uh, senior services, work with community services to evaluate and ensure the adequate provision of, 
of uh, senior <coughs> services. Uh, I just came off a long campaign where I talked with a lot of seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, I made an effort to speak to a lot of people who were not in the more affluent neighborhoods of our town. And, and I just think that a lot of seniors talked about, we pay a lot, but we don't get a lot. So, and I, but I don't know enough about it. So to me, it's more exploratory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the third one uh, I had was uh, workforce housing. Uh, support initiatives to add flexibility to promoting workforce housing. And I really sort of picked that up in discussions with Jessica that efforts have, mm -hmm. are underway to try and uh, introduce greater flexibility yep. in the way in which we can advance it. Mm -hmm. This whole idea of just trying to be creative. Uh, Promote a business-friendly uh, uh, permitting process. Uh, and I say work with the town manager, the planning director, the code enforcement <coughs> officer, and SEDCO to identify opportunities to advance that. And I'm the SEDCO council representative, so I, I <coughs> sort of have the opportunity to kind of work on that. Uh, and, uh, and certainly, uh, uh, I think this is, as I looked at the 2012, 11, and 10, that we had, or 13, 12, and 11, that concept is, was in there regularly. So I'm not, I'm speaking to the choir, I think, in many respects, about people's perception of that as an important issue. Uh, and the last one was uh, promote improved communication at all levels. And I really sort of picked up on that as important from Marie's, uh, 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 she had circulated hers, and that resonated with me that I think we can do a great job together. Because I think we see a lot of stuff eye to eye, and I think that if the more we talk mm -hmm. and share and and collaborate, I think the better job we'll do, and the more the town will say they're out there working for us. So that was that was it. Could I um, just um, just to catch up on one thing um, on the on the budget side that you spoke about? I don't know. Maybe this will be a different, you know, different year. But uh, every year that I've been on, the council's always assigned either we're going to do zero or two and a half or three and a half percent, and that's it. Um, to give, you know, the manage the manager and the department heads and the school a heads up. It totally didn't work at all last year. Um, but we we have to, you know, I think we should be serious about are we going to go for a zero increase, flat, whatever. That's usually, we do that at this time. Did you have a figure that you wanted to set to that? Or you didn't I think didn't, about it? I, you don't want to know, commit. I do. Well, part of, part of it is the <laughs> unpredictability of revenue. Yeah. Right. That, because I was saying, you've got to sort of look at right. both. Right. That, that, and, and so assume the revenue is going to be low, and of course we don't know what our, uh, our uh, assessment changes either right so uh, I don't know if I would I don't know enough about the process you guys have been around there right. so much longer that I'm kind of gonna hold back making any sort of prediction but I do think we should come to it as we learn more about the assessment side and the and the revenue side and where we want to make predictions but on balance it will be a conservative budget and then if things work out better okay Right. You know, the wish list, right. I'm not afraid right. to add wish list mm -hmm. stuff that was appropriate and people got a steer and cut it out, but, you know, if, mm -hmm. if it's there, it's there. Right, but I'm thinking, I want, I think the budget, uh, the, the tax rate should be uh, no, uh, no, zero to CPI uh, for the next five years. Yeah. That's, you know, uh, uh, but, you know, I don't know what all the contractual commitments are. Well, that's why I said mine, keep the tax rate stable. Because right. I don't know what to come right. for yeah. a number. Right. And, and, but, and I, think, I think what we'll do is we'll keep going. We'll find out yeah. what, that, what that actually means from all of us. Yeah. And then we'll go back. Yeah, exactly. Again. But I'm glad you sort of picked up on that because right. that's critical. Jessica. Just to, while I could, oh. while Bill's got the floor, yeah. any other questions of Bill? And, and I, I really want to encourage this part of it, really the dialogue, and I'll try to capture those thoughts about any of his other thoughts, the senior services, workforce housing, or the business friendly. Kind of champion senior services, or I, sort of very knowledgeable about the level of senior services we have versus other communities. 
I think ours is not lagging too much behind, but we, we, you know, I meant I hear a lot of we're lacking a community center yeah. for them to come. We're lacking thing. facilities, probably not lacking programming. Right, right. that's what right. I that's heard. Good. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah I yeah. heard because I don't so. mind sort of saying we may not end up being in the top five or ten or whatever it is, but I, I wouldn't change the fact that I'd work on it. Right, I'd right. put time in and. And, and get educated from Tom and from so right. others of you and, and, and make an effort to sort of say, all right, this is a start. Just to further refine that, maybe under that we'll say, uh, you know, uh, consider expanding programming, which doesn't necessarily need a you know, four walls that can be done. Uh, we've, we've got transportation available. We can bring people to different activities yeah. as well. And, and Ed, you're, you've been involved for yeah. at least a year with the Senior yeah. WOW program. Yeah. Can I add to your senior services when we were talking about programming? Yeah. I don't think it's also just how many, you know, lunch bunches can we provide and these things. I think we also need to serve a purpose that hasn't been met, which is partnerships. Um, there are a lot of folks that are in their homes that are, you know, capable of being in those homes but could really benefit from, say, you know, some kind of a you know, I don't know, mentoring or a volunteer program that will shovel, will sand your walkway for you, will, you know, mm -hmm. th those kind of smaller services. I mean, I know we offer sand to our residents at the Public Works Garage, but obviously the, somebody that's 80 is going to have a hard time maybe yeah. picking up a five-gallon right. bucket and bringing it to their house. And right. So mm -hmm. whether that's, you know, yeah, maybe partnerships with, yeah. I don't know, Eagle Scouts or VIPs or you know, but yeah. something. Or service clubs. I, I, They've I got service clubs. In a word, partnership you know, leaves a lot. Uh, uh, it's uh, funny that you say that absolutely. about the sand because it was just in the paper last week. The VIPs, <clears throat> if the people call, will deliver free of charge oh, yeah, a five-gallon bucket yeah, no, full of sand. The problem with it which you were getting into, one's got to, they got to marry them. Mm. Yeah. So how do, so how do that, you So they don't know. The, uh, the VIPs also have a thing where if people are going away, now in, the, in this mm -hmm. era of not Very trusting close. people, a lot of, there's yeah. a lot of people that when they go yeah, away, they're going place. away and their aunt, uncle, or whatever, and we'll make calls every day. Hmm. And you do you tell the time, you know, mm -hmm. what time of day to call them, and mm -hmm. might re remind them to take medicine, mm -hmm. or just check it in, make sure they're all right. But the, the the problem is getting it out there, if people understand. Right. We don't. Do we yeah. communicate anything on our web page? Sure. Yes. Your services yeah. has quite a quite a robust. Uh, but the problem is a lot of that population may not be, you know, all that comfortable on the. Uh, I was going to say they aren't on the web page. Yeah, mm. yeah access. Uh. A lot of it is getting out into the the different communities where the folks are. So I I wouldn't mind. I just added <coughs> the word enhance and expand programming just so we could you know, make the ones we have even richer and better, or maybe consider expanding programming. And then I, I captured the thought of partnerships. Mm -hmm. Jessica, still have the floor. Um, yeah, so let me go back to, well, I don't know that you have to flip a page. Most of mine are pretty much up there, just with a few tweaks. Um, certainly, yes, um, affordable housing, um, I've been participating in that committee for quite some time. They, they had a few pieces that went out in the last few months, um, and again, coming down into the future, they would like to maybe look at that and address that. And again, um, the, the theme has always been what can we do to encourage it rather than demand it. Um, but in the same token, um, that work will be coming down the pike. So um, whatever we can do to help support that, whether that's, you know, through ideas from you guys or, you know, partnering, you know. Um, I'd probably be looking at, um, now that we have our new council seated and everybody's getting comfortable, um, probably a workshop type setting. Um, we've talked about that with you before, Richard, um, right. about getting together with 
ordinance committee and looking at what our ordinance are doing what what's the roadblocks and what can we do to encourage the these activities we need these starter homes and and first-time buyer homes and an affordable workforce right. housing so yep. um, you know as those things like I said um, try to work through that quite a bit this year um, and those ideas will be coming forward too what I think I hear you saying is really getting a bit more serious I mean we've talked about it you and I've served on that <coughs> for Five years wow. for a while. <laughs> um, a while. Um, so I, I guess I'm going to go over real quick the ones that are already up there. Um, whatever it's for me, it, it, and I've always said we cannot have enough business in town. Um, I'd be much happier if we had a 30% ratio, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I know we've done a really great job over the last year as far as taking some initiative to um, really be working with business. Um, I know the planning board had an extra meeting one night because of some something that transpired, so they had an extra meeting. Um, I just want to add, maybe just advocate that we stay on that path, the, the whatever it takes mentality, that we need to keep those relationships going, we need to build on them, we need you know um, to con continue to just build those good relationships and do whatever it takes that that that's my note is whatever it takes you know, to grow our business what, is, what does the group feel about that phrase I mean that kind of captures it all whatever it takes yeah I see heads nodding I look at it as businesses tax dollars in our community right. that pays for you know for every business we put up right. it offsets president. our schools it offsets our costs um, I, I personally feel we can't have enough business right. in town and whatever we can do well it diversifies your tax base mm -hmm. which is more helpful in um, so um, also already on the board is the budget uh, Fourth, fourth year go around um, I, I'm going to put that on the table as far as what what I am looking for out of a budget this year um, I'd love to say the pipe dream it's flat we're gonna hold the line it's probably unrealistic I didn't have any kind of warmth after our workshop that we weren't going to lose probably more funding again this year <laughs> um, but certainly, I, for me, I have a maximum. Um, I can tell you as a household that just got what we will get for a raise this year. I know very well what the cost of living raises was and um, what they aren't. Um, for me, I have an absolute max cap rate going out to the taxpayer of 3%. That their bill does not increase. The bill in hand is not more than 3% higher to the person paying it. Whatever that means. If that mean, I mean, I hopefully, I, I do you have a sense of all. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw. How have we done with our growth? I know every year our tax base grows a little bit. And just by nature of value and whatnot, and new businesses coming in, we, we I mean, I, I don't know what that entails. If, if we have some healthy growth in the pike, if that's achievable. But my max cap is the three, 3% 3 going out mm -hmm. to the individual homeowner. Yeah, um, so that would be on tax rate. Yes. And not my mill rate, not that their that bill is in three, that more takes than 3% account, higher. Obviously, how much we need to raise to support local efforts takes into account what we may lose or may gain I'll be optimistic from the state uh, and takes it would take into account ultimately any changes in local valuation as well that's not known until way late in the process frankly in July or August once after your budgets even adopted is there further thought about Jessica's suggested 3% as the target I think it's too high I think it's a little rich I think, I think I think it should be it should be capped to the uh, CPI. And right now, the CPI for the past 12 months is 1.2 percent, and that's going to change. But I think it should. I don't think it should be any more than 1.2 percent, or the the CPI for the previous 12 months. Um, and even that, I think, is too high. To be perfectly honest with you, because. Our mill rate has increased 21.6% over the past four years. And the CPI has only gone up 8.3% over the same period of time. 
we can't continue to force the people to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into their pockets, come up with the extra money. We just have to change our method of budgeting, our method of running the government. And maybe, maybe it means that we, we run our fire engines uh, another two or three years and our police cars a little bit longer. Uh, we just have to be smarter. We just have to do it. Well, I think certainly for, for me, I was just stating that that's my, my max height of, of it. I mean, certainly I'd be much happier if it came in at zero. <laughs> I mean, I, I, would not, I would not like it. But um, I, I just, again, this being the fourth rodeo and I can see, I think we need to communicate with the school department. I, I appreciate that they have an 18-month plan, that there's things that they would like to have in their school system, but the reality of it is there will probably come a day for Scarborough that we get no, no funding. That, that, that's just, it is what it is, and I don't really see that changing, and we're losing it by the millions every year. I don't really expect it personally. I don't think it's going to be any different this year. I think we'll probably lose another million or two this year. Is there any predicting? Lost revenue at the school side, and I mean the state does pass a biennial budget, so the, there's a two-year budget. Um, how confident am I in that? Not very confident at all, because I don't right. think I've a year I've worked in Maine, uh, 12 years now, where there hasn't been either a last-minute change right before they adopt the budget or a mid-year curtailment. So right. I, I think it's um, literally been it's, about a million a year we've lost since I've been here. It's just when you find out. Sure. Well, are we going to have to assume the teacher's uh, uh, retirement we again this year? Yet. We, we, yes, but that's been provided for, so they say. You heard that tonight. Well, last, year, last, funny year. Part last year was. Yeah. Yeah, th th that's the issue, Bill, is there's no guarantees going forward. What yeah, happened it's last year? Like the spending rate's a little more important because right. we're it's so at risk uh, yeah. uh, on, the, on the income side that we really have to almost say the spend, if the spending rate were zero, then the likelihood uh, is it could is be what three, I'm... that, that the, the mill rate would go up 3%. I, I can oh, no. probably accurately predict that uh, we would need to be flat funded on spending that's to meet my point. Thank three percent, much here. less one point two percent. See, we did that last year. <laughs> we capped uh, increase in spending roughly three percent, and the school and the and the town right. came pretty close. The school was a little bit above, but the town came in. Actually, the town came in under, under well, well under. Yeah, we were we're, we're down but, on the municipality side. But the tax 2%. rate, the tax rate went up over seven percent. So and some we, of it we have can't. to focus. We have to focus on what's going out to the people. Yep. And we, and so certainly that was it. my point. That I mean, if if the school needs to readjust their improvement plan to to push it out some in order to accommodate <clears throat> this, then that's something that needs to be addressed. Um, well, should that be a theme under budget? Some further. Maybe a bonus <coughs> work with the the uh, school board finance committee. Very good. To Jessica's point, the council does this every year, and every year there is a very specific number, and right. I send it to the superintendent. Right. Um, and it comes back. He's the first one that gets it. I, I remember the year he gave us like a fifteen percent increase. So the first maybe, there, need, maybe yeah. there needs to be a, a a better direct dialogue between the school board members on the finance committee and the town's finance committee mm -hmm. early in the budget agree process. With that. Yep. Yes. So, and it, and it might be important enough to add that as yes. an important theme. Well, I don't see any reason why you can't <coughs> tell them right up front that what we want is we don't want to increase the mill rate or, we do, or we're going to increase the mill rate no more than whatever, one and a half percent, three percent, whatever it is. Yeah. I think Tom can certainly deliver the message to the superintendent, but I feel equally capable of the three of us delivering the message to the school finance oh, yeah. committee. Oh, yeah. I would. I just think that if they understand how strongly we feel about it and how ultimately we're not budget, but we just it, it, obviously there's 
if we really get creamed revenue-wise, we might be going, oh, well, I guess I could live with this. But let's assume that, that we, we're going to be tough on, on, the, on the spending. And, uh, uh, and it's only going to be 1%, 2%. Like you said, it's going to be closer to <coughs> 1% or 2% than 3 or 4%. Because I would be, I just couldn't vote for a budget that was 3 or 4%. I mean, that just would drive me crazy to think that on top of the 22%, you're going to add another 4%. Yeah. Uh, the problem. Everybody in town said that, told me that. It was such a dominant issue. Mm -hmm. Go to the door and say, hey, what, what do you think? Right. <laughs> My taxes are too high. 90% of the comments I got were that. And then a few, you know, miscellaneous about other stuff. It was so dominant. The only, the only problem was sending a figure to the school department is whatever happens at the state end goes back to bite us in the rear end. Yeah. Well, they... Right. I, I mean, yes, we should be able to, down another million but, we, bucks. but we can't. But we also need to be communicating to the taxpayers in town what's going on. And I don't think that it, as, as a council we've done a very good job yeah. with that because people... And again, Bill and I having knocked on doors, people were blaming this and that, and I'd have to refocus them back on, there is a bigger picture here. There is a bigger picture here. I think once people understand that, I mean, we aren't going to fix it this year, but at least I think it's important that people's voices are heard, and the more people <coughs> speak up, the more oh, one thing that they I've, have. I've, excuse me. One thing that I've brought up every year is the fact that one of the things the town does not do that it doesn't really cost them any money is when your tax bill goes out, the postage that goes on it is good for up to six pieces of regular paper. So we have got a venue there to get all information out. That's true. The only thing, the whether you want to call it the only thing or the thing that it does cost is the time to put it together right but that's a lot less than the postage and the postage is going out already so we've got an avenue right. to get right. all the information out twice a year that's a great point right and I don't care if it's to do with dogs or burning permits right anything you want and are you 65 what, and older what, what, and need somebody to send your driveway um, I mean, yeah, certainly the, utilizing one of the, one of the things uh, that uh, always aggravated from me. The council message from the right. chair, message from the town manager. Right. Here's here's what here's what's going on. Going on. Right. He needs Because on one of the things that I don't, I still don't even understand here. Part of my business was septic. Okay, septic installation. And the last time that I lived in, it was 100% septic. Do you think the town sent out something to tell people how to take care of it? No. It's so simple to take care of it. A pumping a year. But instead, they try to jam Red X and all this other stuff up your nose. Right. No. <laughs> J Jim, well, I got to try to keep going here. Uh, no, I'm just saying, we got to get. <laughs> yeah, it's getting late. Like, I captured. And it's still got. So. Uh, Jessica's got to finish up. Yeah. Then, 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 <laughs> but Jim, Jim, I, I captured you your thought. The gavel. Well, I'm going to give you, you, know, you, give you, you know, Jim, I did capture a thought. Under uh, improved communication, we, that's the external Good piece. And I think Bill was talking yeah. about more kind of internal among the council. Yeah. Thank you. So maybe we'll, let's park this budget issue in the number, but I, I really want to insist uh, that you come up, you give me some definitive target so right. I can uh, push that down to my departments and we can send that to the school let's get through let's yeah, get through this and then back. we can name a number we'll go around again and name a number but Jessica can I have two things I wanted to add that weren't on the list already um, I, I want and I, I know we you had talked actually touched briefly about it when we first were um, sitting down but the outreach 
um, to the citizens for the FEMA flood maps and, and what that's going to do as far as what that impact is to them, oh, yeah. whether we're hosting at the fire barns or here at town hall, but you know, as much as we possibly can to outreach for those folks and what that means to them and, and, and the process. You know, there. we could use Southern Maine area a uh, agency on aging, spit out, Jay Murray. Uh, they have a volunteer program and that would be great something to get them to help us do mm -hmm. is go out even to people's houses and talk to them yeah and I'm gonna be honest with you I don't even know what the flood maps what that I, I mean I think the first year I was here they talked about it and then they I pulled do. it back and pulled it out and right. then pulled it back and I don't even know what, right. what that means as at this they point so, a lot of outcry. so even just as myself as, a, as, as I think for the council it would be beneficial to have right. something just to, support yep um, I know it means something, and I know it means something bad, but what it is, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> a lot of money it, for some people. Well, yeah. It, 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 yeah. It's an issue we need to be concerned with. Yes. It's potentially, yeah. it uh, decreases land values. Yes. It certainly decreases uh, the potential for development on property, and therefore, potentially, its value. Right. Uh, so there's there's potentially some huge yep. um, implications. So um, to be informed, I guess, is okay. the best thing I can say. Good thought. Um, and then my last thought was um, it piggy, piggybacks into historic preservation, which was from our last one. Um, I would ask my fellow councilors, there was a one year, this was an ad hoc committee. Um, I've been a member of that committee. I can tell you the work was um, a, a, a lot more than I had anticipated, <laughs> um, especially on the research side, um, trying to dig um, through old records and, and, and whatnot. So um, we will be asking for an extension of, of that committee, and hopefully we can support them in that. Um, so um, I guess it just it's historic preservation, you know, like I said, supporting them. Um, they will be coming forward here in the next couple of weeks with they've finally finished trudging through all the town records. There is a short list um, that they're going to be presenting shortly here. Um, the next phase for them is going to be what we would like to do, <coughs> and they'll be looking for direction from, from each of us um, as a council. So um, again, if I just ask that we continue to support these efforts. Um, the list is disheartening. I, I, I'm here to tell you it's a very short list of what's left that's significant here in town. Um, so I think this is a very important piece. Just if I, uh, so I just had renew committee uh, just so it can continue its work, but it sounds like you're ready for kind of an action plan. You've identified what needs to be preserved, now yeah. we need to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Is that a fair way? Yeah. Um, certainly, the, I know our intent when we informed them was to have this more as a, as a two-step process. What is there? What's left? And what can we do, um, much like with the affordable housing, to encourage it to stay that way? Um, I don't expect that charge to change. Um, we certainly, that was never my intention when I brought it forward to, you know, make it so strict or stringent here in town that, you know, you're your color of your house needs to be this and that and the other. But certainly, you know, you know, direction from us of how we would like to, you know, there's a lot of options. There's, um, I, I could probably go on for a couple of hours about all the different ideas that that committee's kicked around. But, but yes, yeah, certainly just to support those efforts of trying to, you know, maintain what's left. Right. Um, yep. And that's it for me. Jim. <coughs> I agree with everything up there. And the only things that are importance, of more importance to me is a responsible budget, which I'm not going anywhere near that. Um, sharing of services within the town, I do know that if some time was spent uh, lawn mowing, trees, uh, Plowing, some of these things that if they if they're sent to private businesses can be done possibly for a lot less money. Um, so I'm sorry, I 
I, I wrote down the first thing I heard was sharing services, but what I thought I heard you just say, privatization. Yep. Mm-hmm. Maybe those are two combination different. Combination of both. Okay. Come. If they can both be looked at, mm -hmm. then a reasonable decision can be made. So, so in, your, in your mind, it's kind of the same thought as opposed to two different goals. Okay. Yes. Okay. Zoning issues has always been a little thought and might behind. I can see through going through town on a daily basis the places that do not have permits when they're adding on. Uh, <coughs> and that I mean they've got to come in and get a license for the particular job. I mean you can go down Pine Point Road and there's three that stick out unbelievable front portions that are 20 feet long, four feet off the ground. They don't have a railing. Now, there's two aspects that I'm looking at is that is, is number one, it's allowing people to put something up that's going to come back and bite somebody, whether they sell at the house or someone gets hurt on it. Uh, you, you've, you've all seen... Uh, in Massachusetts, they had a, a series of decks falling off from the third floor, and it's because they didn't have a, a license to do it, and it was done incorrectly. It was put up with nails instead of with bolts. People were dying falling off them, and you don't need to fall from 20 feet. So but better enforcement? I hate to say it, but I'd say enforcement, period. Because these same places, they're still here 10 years long, ten years later. Now, there's going to be a portion of it that's just going to happen. But there's a lot of it that is missed. Whether there needs to be someone within the, in the building department paid to on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis go around and check the places. They're getting paid anyway. It's more money in the bank. Jim, I, I'd like to talk to you after. If there are particular places you know about, I, I, mm -hmm. I need to check in on those. Um, but I heard enforcement, and it, you started with zoning, and you went to, I guess, kind of building codes. Enforcing the building code. Okay. Violations, building code violations. Yes. Okay. That's it. Okay. For me. Ed. Um, just to get back to the budget issue. Um, I'll put a number up there. I think the mill rate should be flatlined and no more of an increase than 1.2%. And how we get to it, I don't know, but we'll back into it if we have to. They said mill rate flatlined, but tax rate increase 1.2. I'm not sure if I understand the difference no. there. But the mill rate, or flat rate, flatline the, the mill rate, or at worst, no greater than. One point two percent, which, which would be equal to roughly the CPI. Shall I reduce it to writing? Well, I mean, it's <laughs> a friendly amendment might be one point five because it's sort of rounding. <laughs> but but it's uh, <laughs> it's in that neighborhood. I mean, I don't I don't know exactly know what it is, but I I certainly think maybe. You want to round it to 1.5? I. Well, how do you feel? Can I can I chime in on that? I just thinking off the top of my head, and I'm going to throw one example out there. Our salt and sand budget. Mm. This has been a horrible winter. Now we've reaped the benefit of some mild winters. Those budgets haven't been very high. Mm. Gas hasn't been as bad because they're not running the trucks. I just. Off the top of my head, general basic bottom line maintenance, I can tell you I can envision those lines 
because they didn't have to repurchase. Those lines are going to be higher next year. And, and I don't look at that as this is a fair, but there's going to be those baseline expenses that we're not going to escape this year. And I, I just, I don't think you're going to hit it at one point. So I, I appreciate the, you know, I mean, I appreciate it, but. We spent zero. No, no increase at all. I don't well, at, You know, if something goes up, what do you do at home? If something goes up and you can't afford it, you take, you take it away from something else. Okay. It's pretty well, simple. My only point is that I know, because we, we're going to be talking layoffs. Mm. That, that, that's all there is to on the municipal side. We are flat. We're as flat that's as flat as it. We are negative. We are we aren't. We aren't we're negative two percent. Yeah. There's nothing left for us to to get rid of. There's Here's we the haven't thing. hired. We've had a hiring freeze. We've been only <coughs> giving some non-union. We're getting no raises. I, I mean, we've dropped them down to the worst possible health insurance plan. I mean, there's nothing left for us to go. So to say flat. Just, and I can't speak for the school, but I know on the municipal side to say you will be flat, it's, you're laying somebody off. That, and I just, I want to make sure that we're aware of that, that I'm not saying that's not acceptable. I'm just saying be aware, somebody's getting let go, whether that's a policeman or a fireman or a town clerk. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Just be aware of that, that that's what that means. We're letting people go. There, there's no nothing left on our side. Maybe there's some more wiggle room on the school side, but but there's nothing left. It will mean layoffs. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm think, is there kind of like the sequester for, for every dollar that we go over 1.5? Does that half of it have to come from cuts? I don't know how that exactly works, but uh, it, it's it's a shared thing. If 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 we're going to exceed one and a half percent in the tax rate, then, and then it it just doesn't go up, even though we're at zero. We find, as Ed says, we find a way to some percentage of that go, that goes over one point five has to be borne by reduced uh, costs. See, I, another item that I have under bu budget issues is that we should do a thorough review of all the fees and fines that are currently in effect and adjust them, if appropriate, to increase potential revenue. Um, now there's another side to that, too. There's a lot of fines. And there's a lot more tickets. <laughs> there's a lot of fines that... I never imposed. Um, That's certainly a revenue issue. Is that still generally under budgeting, or is that sure. important enough to be a standalone goal? Well, Increase revenue by way of the fines and fees. I, it's part of the budget issue. I mean, that's what you're going to do during the budget, anyhow. You're going to be looking at yeah, they that come up aspect every, of the budget. We can, I can dedicate time. To, yeah. We can dedicate time to that. Well, so, um, well, maybe maybe we shouldn't uh, set a goal then this year of, uh, I meant, I've heard this, the three of you are on um, the finance committee and <laughs> send them, <laughs> and send them like you um, know what you want. As low as possible, I guess. Yeah. That's the best thing I can say. And you know, I just to, to, tell, to sort of have a number in hand that you can. It is. I mean, I, we invest a lot of time and effort, and if if we come in uh, so woefully um, beyond your expectations, it's it's uh, to the extent we know up front, we'll do our best. In fact, I will, I will deliver a budget that meets your goal. Uh, the di the difference there is it's what we have control over and what we don't have control over. And that's been this, the, mm. the broken record for the last four years. Uh, our spending is, uh, has been kept in check. In fact, yeah. it's down 2.5% 2 2 over the last five yep. years. It's all the external factors that are driving it. And at the end of the day, it's the tax rate that matters. That's what the taxpayer right. sees, and that's what hurts them. If, I know um, that. It, I mean, it, you get a, the reality of the, the whole thing is, um, our biggest issue is for whatever you know whatever reason it may be at the time is is the school is the biggest um, factor in 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 the budget you know um, 
I think if you if you um, you're looking for more more cuts and you're not going to um, they're not going to come from the school side there's going to be municipal employees going home here at town hall public works you're going to and uh, you're going to have a reduction in um, services so um, you know if that's what the people want they want the schools funded and you want to take away from the municipal side I don't want to hear it when the roads aren't plowed at the appropriate time you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the, uh, you know, and, and when you need a police officer and it, he's going to take, you know, longer to get there because there's only three, three instead of four or two instead of three, then I don't want to hear about it. Uh, and you have to set your priorities. We've heard from the people saying the taxes are going up, they're, they're getting too much, which I have to agree because I hear... You know, people say, you know, my, I, I don't care, I'll pay another $200. Well, that might mean 600 to somebody else. And, you know, I mean, just because, uh, you know, you might have a, a higher price property doesn't mean you've got that income, like we talked about earlier, to cover that, you know, your taxes. Yeah, I, I, don't, it, I don't suggest this to bury our head in the sand, because ultimately it's the tax rate that matters. But what yeah. we have control over is the spending side. And at the very least, if you can give me a definitive target yeah, I was thinking on that side. The same as Tom, that if we just said the cost side, there'll be a zero increase because we are assuming we're going to lose ground on the revenue side. And that might mean we're at, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, a tax rate increase of 1%, 1.5%, 2%. But if we set as a, a benchmark, that we're going to have a flat expense side for this year, there's a reasonable chance that you know, we won't hit the three or four percent. Mm -hmm. If we do, at least we we can then say, hey, we we don't we have not raised the expenses in the town a penny. Every penny that is going into the tax increase is due to the state uh, taking money away from us. So you're saying look at it more as a spending goal as, as opposed to... I just was thinking the same thing that Tom just said. Just think of it as a, a, a spending goal. Because we can't predict where that ends up with the tax rate. Mm -hmm. So what are you saying? Flatline the, the, the spending? Yep. Because our, what's our prediction after hearing right. what we heard from no, the legislature? Not good. That, it's, that mm -hmm. if we flatline the spending, we will have a tax increase. And we just, what we're praying is it isn't 4 or 5%. Mm. Is that doable, Tom? Not without some pain. I mean, there'll be the reduction of service, maybe maybe well, reduction of force. Um, I think the school will have uh, a much more difficult time doing yeah. it than us. Uh, the fact is, I forget the number, it's 80 84% of the budget is fixed costs, salaries, and benefits. Uh, so for them to do it, it certainly means cutting into staff resources. Uh, uh, that's just a fact. Yeah. What happened in 2008 when we had a flat line budget? What kind of an impact was it to the town that we year? used We used uh, savings. We mm -hmm. used fund balance partially balance, right. uh, mm -hmm. to artificially plug the hole. I believe that was the first year, and don't quote me on this, but uh, in two successive years, the school reduced something over 25 employees each year. And then, frankly, we've been rebuilding, or rebuilding. they yeah. wanted to rebuild for the subsequent two or three budget years. They're about back to where they were before those cuts happened. I'm just being honest, and, and that's, yeah, no, that's no. the facts of the, the case. But that's what we have control over, and that's what I can give di very <coughs> direct uh, direction to my staff yeah. and to the school. I get, let's. Better to start low than to start high. Okay. Because every, right. everything, everything mm -hmm. that we, whatever we start with is going to end up going up. It's only going in one direction. Mm -hmm. This is, well, I think a way, I get a way to take care of this. But for right now, is there any, do you have anything else, Ed, for goals? Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead with them, and we'll, we'll come back to the, okay. the other issue. Go ahead. Okay. My next one is keep going. review residential property assessments. And what that is, it's based upon this uh, 
reassessing the oceanfront properties at Higgins Beach, Prouts Neck, and Pine Point in 2012, which increased the town uh, assessment by what, roughly $40 million. Uh, all the people have been fighting it. Uh, and if anybody's been reading all the write-ups on it or watching the tapes, it's a horror show. Yep. It's a real horror show. And I think the town council's got a responsibility to take a look at this and find out what's going on and be prepared because 42% of the residential properties in this town are appraised over or below what the state guideline is. That's pretty bad news. So you're asking, you're saying you, you think we should do a, a townwide town reevaluation? Well, that's one of my things, yeah. How much does that cost, Tom? Uh, rough numbers, uh, half a million. Um, we're, we're, we're actually talking to consultants about that we already, so I can have better, more definitive numbers, but that's a, a rough number. We also have to take. We also have to horizon for 2015. Well, we're, the staff is very interested in converting to some of the more modern assessing mm -hmm. systems, and it it probably makes sense as part of that to do a, a full revaluation, and then a, thereafter adopt their new system. Right. All right. Well, that probably should be called then reevaluation assessment. I think yeah. I, I think the town council. Uh, needs to have a legal opinion on the town's chances with these discrimination cases that are going to be brought forward by these people. You know, we, I want to hear from somebody totally independent that hasn't been involved in the thing what our chances are of winning the cases or losing the cases. Because we, there's big bucks involved here. So far there's about a, about a million dollars of revenue that we've built out or potentially will build out to these homeowners that we could have to turn around and give back to them. What have the legal that's fees like, been so far? And, Any? and that's another thing. The legal fees just um, Yeah, I don't know exactly. Uh, in the order of 80000 bucks, I think, mm -hmm. between uh, support for the Board of Assessment Review and and legal defense for town staff so I meant the legal opinion probably has already been rendered to us correct no. would they, or they wouldn't be fighting it right would we be going forward if we thought we we're gonna lose uh, I, that's, we've there's there's a bunch of lawyers that are pleading the case for the town yep. okay and there's a bunch of lawyers that are pleading the case for the homeowners right and they're totally different. Their opinions are totally different. And if you listen to uh, the proceedings on TV, yeah. it's hilarious. It really is. It really is. I think we need somebody to come in and say, their chan your chances of winning a discrimination. That's another thing. This is all about discrimination. And discrimination just doesn't come up in any of the proceedings. And that's what's going to be going to court. Are we in an active? Not to my knowledge, but if the town, if the, if the matters are appealed to Superior Court, then the town council certainly mm -hmm. has, should be involved in the decision and the understanding of uh, should we defend this going forward. And I guess maybe that is a goal then, right? Well, th that will happen as a matter of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's should we, be, should the matters be appealed? Yeah. I think that. There's a more fundamental issue I think Ed's getting at, whether or not you want to consider a town-wide uh, town -wide, town -wide uh, review or, and or revaluation. Hey, Bill, you want to just add a couple of things? Well, there's a, for, for me, there's a preliminary question. Yep. Uh, when this all got started, I was one of the people who had the big tax increase. Yep. Uh, but I also happen to practice in this area, so I know it cold. Right. And so I helped... I wasn't going to participate in the lawsuit. Just I, that wasn't my uh, my interest. I wanted to uh, be involved in the town as a town councilor. Uh, so uh, I did help 
uh, the people for, for quite a bit of time. Uh, but then I got elected and I stopped and I kept out of it because mm -hmm. uh, having helped the taxpayers who were appealing, uh, I felt as if I had a conflict right. to come in now and say, yeah. no, I don't think Ed has any conflict and Ed can say it and he said right. it well. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I also think that the evidence that came up, I can speak to the bit about uh, a very unrelated to the discrimination of these individual ta taxpayers and I was one who was harmed by it, but and, and therefore might eventually benefit if the superior court said, "Hey, everybody who got increased on the on the waterfront there, they're all getting it." So that's not. I don't want to have anything to do with that. But I do agree with Ed that mm -hmm. Don Petron did an analysis, and it was then reduced to evidence in these proceedings that said, on a town-wide basis. The system looked flawed. It looked like we had the the rules require you to be within uh, ten percent of uh, uh, when you have all these sales within ten percent of the assessment, up or down. Yep. So it's a big wide gap. Right. And over forty percent <laughs> of all the sales miss that goal. Do, can I just? Uh, no. we, we have pending appeals still, and I, I think we're yeah. Yeah. I was just going to threading into. I, in yeah. the area, right. So I clearly there's an interest yeah, on the part of council. I know. So I'm involved with with that, but that that right. issue I think will eventually come up. So, so okay, right. But phrase this? So like Tom said, we got to be careful about how we discuss this. If right. it's you know, so uh, sorry. Uh, uh, I, mean, I heard a couple different things from from right. Ed. Uh, He started with a review of town assessment methods. I thought I heard. And then there's been conversation of revaluation. Those could be independent town wide reassessment in 2014. I think we're due for a reassessment this year. I'm not sure, but I think we are. I think the last one was done in 2004. I don't know whether it's state requirement that you have a reassessment every 10 years or not, but just based upon what's been brought up so far, uh, we should seriously consider Tom you had mentioned you had thought just an off the top of your head figure that was about a, how much for a town wide half a million about half a million is, a it might be more um, I, we're, we're actually having conversations with one of the premier f firms so I'll have a, a budget number for it for sure can I be a stinker and tell you that means we'll be spending money? Right. <laughs> I just want to throw that out. No, there. no. And that's why I asked the question. That's, that's a chunk of cash. That. But you got to spend um, money to be fair, though. Absolutely. But everything. no, I'm just so. putting that out there. That that's yep. <laughs> okay. I've got independent town wide revaluation. That would be Tom coming back to us with what the Code Enforcement Planning Board says is their best judgment on the timing and the appropriateness. Uh, of that. No, this is a separate third-party firm that comes in and does a town-wide... Um, what I'm saying is, is, is uh, are the people who report to you on, ass on assessing say, yes, it is time to do that? I mean, we don't, we don't have an... We're not professionals. So it would, we would look to you and the assessing department. We have a new assessor. He has come to me, and that's why we reached out just to try to get some budget figures. His, I believe, his motivation is that he'd like to move to this newer, better system. And as part of that, it does make sense to um, contract with them to do the full wide revaluation. I don't believe his motivation is that we, our values are terribly out of whack. But um, he's, he is uh, <coughs> collecting that budget information and will be prepared to present that. And we can do that sooner if, if the council wishes. We may well be talking about this issue should these matters be mm -hmm. appealed to Superior Court between now and then. Well, that's another thing that we got to put up there. We have to stay on top of this oh, issue yeah. now. Not just the independent town-wide reassessment, but stay on top of the process that's going on. All the appeals and then the, the potential lawsuits. We have to stay well, on top once, of that. Once we're served, right. we're served, and, and we'll certainly be aware and in, in attention. I'm not sure what you mean 
beyond that. Well, what I mean is I want to know, I want to have somebody tell me what our chances are of winning those or losing those uh, lawsuits so that we can make decisions as to do we, do we pursue the lawsuits or do we just drop it? That will happen as a matter of course. If the town sued, we'll get I will approach yeah, we'll the council and session, seek yeah. your advice for Did whether we, we defend. We could stop the pro We could stop it right now if we wanted to. We could say, that's it. No more. We're going to give back the $40 million and start from this. Uh, ground zero, and we'll do an independent so, townwide revaluation. You know, certainly we could have a town legal opinion. I don't know that necessarily needs to be a goal, but we can certainly, you know, I mean, Tom can call the town attorney tomorrow and say, give us your legal opinion on the processes that we had and we used and the tools and the software, and the, if you have an opinion yeah. that there was something in error or, you know, um, I mean, that's certainly easy. Now, I think that's just a phone call. Well, I, I think I hear Councillor Blaze wanting to have firsthand, face-to-face -face opportunity to hear from them and ask questions. There are, there can you continue to be pending appeals, so we need to, I'm sensitive to uh, not muddying those waters. Mm -hmm. uh, others have been uh, adjudicated through the local process, and it remains to be seen whether they go further. Clock's running on the first set to appeal to the Superior Court. That's right. They'll, they'll, um, they'll, their 30 days will run out soon. So th that seemed very fine grain for a goal for 2014, uh, and I appreciate that it's coming up in this venue. If, if the council as a group uh, wishes to have me bring in uh, legal experts to advise the council, then I'll certainly do that. I might suggest that I, I don't know if that fine grain needs to be on your 2014 goals necessarily. I, I, maybe it's re review our assessing practices with that, you know, as, as a policy. I, I'm, I'm asking you, Ed, Ed, I don't know, you know, review our, our policies around our practices for, for that or? Well, I, I mean the, the assessment process is all governed by state law. I, I'm not questioning that. I'm questioning what's going on now with the oceanfront properties and the impact that it has on the town or could, pot could potentially have on the town um, and staying on top of that. Okay. And if, if it's that particular, I would suggest uh, one of two things should ha needs to happen first before the council should get involved. One is a matter gets appealed to Superior Court, in which case I think the council needs to be fully uh, briefed uh, on, the, on the status of the case and make a decision whether we defend ourselves in that case. The, other the first one could happen within a number of days, as far as I know, right? Okay, then, then we'll have oh. to convene and make a decision sooner than later in that regard. Beyond that, um, if, should that not happen, I, I would strongly recommend you let the local appeal process run its course, and then I think the council um, is free to engage their legal experts and, and their, the town assessor and whomever else you wish to talk uh, about those issues. But while they're pending, I strongly advise that you, you do not have that conversation. That's fair. Mm -hmm. that's I would agree with that. Is that it? You got anything else? One more. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, <laughs> we we implemented the employee incentive program on the municipal side this year. I think we should encourage the school department to implement it on their side. It's just a simple one liner and that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead, I can Okay, Jimmy. Oh he's still right no. <laughs> I already gave it said to you can go ahead. Thank you. Um, you should have received mine anyway, but yes. just to go over them real very quickly. 
Uh, and you can see a theme with mine, it's communication. Because I think that communication and, and clear, concise communication between parties helps avoid a lot of issues down the line. That being said, my first goal is improved communication, and I broke it up uh, to be between counselors. And I like to see us sharing emails received and sent. So when I get something that's just to me, I'm sharing it mm -hmm. with other counselors and in my replies also, and I'd like to see that happen, uh, just so we're all on the same page or know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then give others heads up on issues as necessary in a timely, ma uh, timely manner. And then between counselors and constituents is huge. Um, try return emails within reasonable time. I. I follow the 24-hour rule, but I do that because of business. Uh, return your phone calls. Uh, have office hours around town, if possible, or have counselors available for people to come in and talk to. I know that was talked about at town hall at some point. Make uh, better use of our website. Um, make use of our TV station capabilities. I know we used to do, uh, what was it, First Friday forums was something that yes. they did at one point. Regular communications with the local newspapers. I'm looking at Mike back there. Um, <laughs> um, and then I love that about putting flyers in the tax bills. I think that's a fabulous idea because that is an opportunity yep. since we're already um, doing that. Uh, second is regular communication interaction with the legislative delegation, which we started today. Uh, meet with members prior to session start. Meet once a month within, during the session and then have one or two counselors perhaps act as liaisons to the delegation to be like the spokesperson or if we decided we wanted to go up and have someone testify as on behalf of the town council of Scarborough or how, I mean that's just mm -hmm. an idea to throw out there. Number three I have, oh, he's, uh, it has to do with business, uh, to encourage and actively support SEDCO, the chamber mm -hmm. and by local in order that uh, all of those outfits can assist us as the council in identifying and encour encouraging and supporting all businesses. I'd like to see a major effort made to identify home-based businesses. Again, when I was out campaigning, it's amazing how many people, I'm one of them, uh, work from home um, and have businesses and I, I actually have some thriving businesses out there that I didn't even know existed, like someone bakes birthday cakes and, you know, I was just interested in seeing these small businesses. Um, is that a zoning issue? No, oh. not necessarily. <laughs> no, I meant it could be. Yes, it could be. Well, it could be. A broadening and allowance of home-based businesses. Well, right, and it ask. could go into ordinance. Yeah, I mean, and those are all things, too, that could go into ordinance. But it's just something to look at. What's business look like in this town and where we want it to go? Because I, I, I'm of the, of the opinion that bricks and mortar um, is not the future of a lot of businesses due to technology, except for manufacturing and some retail, but even retail, you look at Amazon. I mean, they don't have bricks and mortar. They're gonna have those drones flying around, dropping off your packages. Um, four was improved communication with school department through uh, working with the Board of Education and uh, encouraging us on the council to visit the schools, meet with the superintendent, and meet with the board other than during budget time, just to have a picture of what's going on there. So that we know when they're sending us a budget, we have a better idea of what the heck they're talking about. Um, yeah. And then five, I've got to keep the tax rate stable. I didn't come up with any 1.2s and whatever. By engaging regularly with those entities who most impact it, those are those outside forces. And I've got, and I was thinking off the top of my head that basically it's your legislature and schools, and actively advocate for the taxpayers of Scarborough. Um, and examine current and future budgets with an eye towards efficiency and efficacy. So that's mine. <laughs> there you are. It'll look that one up. Well, I communicate with the school department. So it goes on. Yeah, I mean. One thing you talked real specifically about email protocol. That kind of internal issue the council. Right, I see that more as a probably maybe a policy thing that we develop or whatever. Well, what came to mind that we're struggling with, that's not what we're struggling with, but thinking about the social media, that we're not oh. using it very well, yeah. much at all. And I, I kind of fall in that realm of communication. A huge percentage of our population, they, they get all their information through social media and nothing else. 
the police department and the fire department do a fabulous job with Facebook. So going forward, if yeah. we're not sending yeah. invitations to some of those channels, we're missing yeah. an increasing percentage of the population. Yeah, I agree with that. But there's some challenges and potential pitfalls. Yeah. It'll grow. I mean, it's largely under the age of 30 at the present time. Actually, the greatest uh, growth in Facebook spend between the ages of 40 and 64. Believe it or not. Uh, it is for the younger kids, it's way past eh? <laughs> They're in a Snapchat. And, I don't know, Jessica probably is more. Yeah, Snapchat, WhatsApp, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What's an issue when we deal with the administrative line? I just said keeping the tax rate stable. Um, by Got that one. Yeah. And I think that's that's repeating everyone's sort of yeah. I think we're all on the same track there. I just I have a couple of thoughts. I would just put it. Oh, I'm sorry, Richard. You haven't gone yet. Richard hasn't gone yet. <laughs> <laughs> Richard has gone. <laughs> go. we, Nothing from you. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just going to touch on basically probably most of what's already said. Um, I think one of the top things is um, to me is affordable house houses. You have workforce housing. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that name either. And I don't think affordable housing covers it either because that could mean apartments. <clears throat> I'm looking at <clears throat> houses that are affordable for, for you know, you know, starter houses. So I thought we had that started, but it didn't work out. So we got to look at it again. Jessica and I have been, and Tom have been talking about this in quite in depth of how we're going to make it happen. You should talk to the town of Yarmouth because they had an affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty successful, but then the issue becomes when you go to sell it. I know, again, running I, into it. We talked about and, that. And then it ends up leaving the affordable and becoming... Well, but anyway. Well, well, we're, we've we've talked mm -hmm. about that, Tom and I. Yeah. Maybe the town Jessica Yarmouth had, that a, had a program that was pretty okay. successful. So, <laughs> that being said, um, I meant being on the council for the time that I have, I've seen um, support come and go for SEDCO. Um, I, I think the uh, supporting SEDCO is very important. Promoting business in town is very important. Um, ordinance reviews, that would fall under, um, where was it? Business friendly. Is it business friendly permits? That would kind of be, you know, also ordinance reviews to uh, some, some ordinance. We'll just say for an example, uh, septic may be too, you know, over stringent. Uh, more than what we need well we need to look at that and change it <clears throat> if that's the case that's just an example yep <clears throat> um, and I think we should uh, this is um, two new ones that I have um, would be uh, once again the website town website I think can be could be better than it is. And committee, once again, this year, committee um, report, the committee reports, the minutes of the meeting, what these committees discuss, um, put onto the website for transparency so that the uh, public can see what they're actually talking about. Uh, some of the committees, they've, they've loaded stuff on, but it's, it's old, mm. it's nothing new and updated. <clears throat> and uh, 15, oh, okay. <clears throat> 15 would be review the needs of the, this municipality. What, what conditions are uh, buildings in? Oh, I should say future needs, you know. Um, future needs of public safety, future needs of public works, future needs of... Uh, mm. um, Town hall, possibly. So, like long, long-term capital improvement plan. Right. Um, you know, um, w there's been talk in the past about a community 
um, community center or a um, um, senior center. Right. Yeah. Um, there's public talks safety. Of, yeah, public, public safety. safety. Yeah. So I, I just mean, called it long range facility planning. Yes, absolutely. Schools going through their own process. It'd be great that. to dovetail it at, at some time during the year and, and really prioritize as a community what's yeah. important. Yeah. I got ordinance review, website, SEDCO, promote business. Um, uh, the one thing I wanted to just mention that I made a note of, you know, when we you no, know, not buy a police car for um, a couple of years or something to that effect. Um, when it comes to police officers, we've got to think about their safety too mm. and, 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 you know, can that car make it? The best example is public works. They put uh, three dump trucks off for the longest time and they limped them to the auction. Matter of fact, one of them, the rear end at, on Highgate yeah. Parkway on the yeah. way to the auction. So I think we got our value out of them, but that's what we got to be careful of because one lost an engine, we had two, one or two broken frames. You can only stretch them so long. And that's what we got to be careful of. That. That's the only thing I want, you know, it's okay if we can get away with it. If we can't, we got to be careful with that. Because yeah. then we could end up with having a, you know, a big, big bill the following year for, you know, I uh, meant they uh, stretched the ladder truck longer, as long as they could. Um, you could poke your finger through the frame. Yeah. That. But, you know, I think they've done a good job so far um, with, with that stuff. Um, and then that's it for me. And then um, I think we should, you know, we'll go around the table and we'll put a number on that um on the budget okay what's your number um on the cost side yep zero you zero zero on well because you side. talked all right no and and let the and 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 let the uh let the uh tax rate uh be more it's out of our control we're we're saying we're not spending any more cost than or spending or cost. are you considering that the same cost Okay. Yeah, spending. Yeah, that uh, the tax rate is going to just take care of itself. We, it's out of our control how uh, how uh, Augusta uh, treats us. Uh, but at least if we want to be responsible, we are assuming we're not going to get treated well. So a zero uh, uh, cost puts us at uh, an increase in taxes of one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Something bad, but that's I could live with uh, an increase that I don't like if I knew we at least had held the line on our spending. No spending at all. Yeah. <clears throat> so that means we're talking that the um, contractual obligations are still covered. Yeah, well, it's no yeah, new right. spending. Okay, is that what you're saying? Getting at? that their budget from last year is going to be their budget for this. Okay. Coming. That's different than what you just said. Exactly. Yeah. That's flat. Right. right. Flat, right. Zero so isn't flat. Those contractual requirements will have to tighten the belt elsewhere to compensate for those requirements. That's what I'm, I'm getting confused. Because I, I don't know whether it's zero or flat. I would be, because if, uh, if it turns out that we get some revenue from the state that we didn't expect and we get some revenue from increased assessments that we didn't expect, I don't mind going up to one and a half, two percent, but I'm not, I don't want to get sort of hoodwinked into that. So I'm just going to say, let's just start on the cost side and we'll let the uh, revenue side kind of unfold. All right, well, Jessica, where are you at? Um, I'm at an absolute maximum of three percent going out to in, in, tax rate. to the in, in the actual, and I want to be careful about this word because I said the word, word wrong last year. So I'm not saying rate or I'm not saying anything <laughs> else. I'm saying the bill that goes to their physical hand is not three percent higher than it was the year before. So that's where I'm at. Of course, it's, yeah. <laughs> And would that be 3% on the mill rate? 
That's still that's, a, it's mill rate. Mill rate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how's that? What's that translate into one point two or? I don't know. No, What's it's currently the no rate Because you don't know what oh, okay, the... Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, Jim? Zero. Zero. I'm at three. You're at... Jim, Jim you, zero on the spending? Or zero on the tax rate? Or zero on the tax rate. Zero on the spending. So he and I are talking the same thing. Yes. I may be talking the same. Well, you're thing. darn close. <laughs> <laughs> you probably yeah. end up being right. In the right. final analysis, I think it's going to be darn close. This is like I don't because I'm like I think we're talking about the same we thing. Are. But we are. We are. I think we are it's right. all. You're three percent on the yeah. tax rate. But well, let me tell you something. It's a good thing that we're having <laughs> this discussion. We just pray we think it's safe last year. <laughs> Right. I think so you're right. You you're going to be zero on the spending, and right. you're going to wind up being 3% three percent on the small ball glares. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think yeah. we're all talking about. I think we we're all saying the same thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. So translate I'd say that. Zero, give us a budget. Zero on the spending, but 1.2 percent on the. <laughs> I, I'm saying the CPI. <laughs> Don't let the tax rate go higher than the CPI. What if the CPI jumps? Right now, it's 1.2 percent. I know, last but what if it months. jumps? I'm just gonna. I'm just so it can't jumps move a jumps? lot. Okay. <laughs> and we have that many more months before we'd be using it as a benchmark. Now this was easier in the past years. <laughs> really? <laughs> so what are you, what are you <laughs> saying? What are you saying? I I, I go Zero with the three percent. I go with the three percent. Yeah. Okay. But so I understand well, where uh, Bill's coming from with that. Hold the line if we can on the spending as much as we can. Yeah. I mean, we'll just start there because that's the only thing we can actually give direction to Tom to give direction to the department heads. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that we don't get creamed <sighs> with reduced revenue. All right, I think we're, I don't, do you understand what we're talking about, Tom? <laughs> No, Not particularly. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I, I understand it. I don't think there's wait until I we hear his. consensus, I, I guess is my point. I can't no, wait I to got see how this three, is written I got up three zeros and three threes. Uh, let's, so, pick, uh, let's pick one or the other. Let's when one uh, the Bill other. goes out, it's e 3%. Either zero here is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yep. 3% with the exception of Ed. I think it's difficult to have yeah. targets, frankly. Uh, effectively, if it's 3% here, it's likely to be zero or less than zero. Well, let's do the 3%. Everybody who has to do a budget says, well, it's 3%, so I'll go up 3%. Because they're assuming that our revenue right. stream is going to be the same. Right. That's how I think you got whipsawed last year. No, yeah. no, 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 not true. There's a, there's a new normal. Uh, there, there's not th these assumptions. Uh, in, Budget the reason that we're up. down two percent in spending over a five-year period. But see, there was an extra there from the tax rate. You have to do an extrapolation to get the uh, spending budget. Right. You have to uh, uh, say how much are we going to have to get below the tax rate of three percent to actually then. That's what. Yeah. See, that's who's on first. I say you just go with. So the no budget. new spending. Right. Don't ask for any more. You just right. get what you got last year, right. and the rest is you cover your contractual obligations. Is that or yes. not? Uh, just be, be careful that you're talking about 80 percent of the budget of the school. No, I understand budget. that's what I'm trying to find out well, because you're going to have layoffs in the school. Then. Good point. Yeah. Are, are, you're going to have layoffs in the school plus contractual obligations. Yes. Not necessarily. They have a million actually. This is, listen, this is the goal. You're not adopting the budget tonight. <laughs> this council yeah, will have the final I know it's a goal, but I don't want to do another goal that we can't meet ball. like last year. Yeah, it's just embarrassing. It's a fair point. It's Over a fair and above point. what they expected. Don't you think? As yeah. little as possible. Can we leave it at that? <laughs> Didn't come out right last year, did Keep it? Keep the tax <laughs> rate stable. <laughs> How about as a compromise, this number would be 3% or less? Yep. Or I less. Like it. 3% or less. Yeah, like that's or less. no, 3% is okay. This number you have, less? you have. Is he or less in capital letters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll write it in purple if you want. <laughs> For you, we'll do it in caps. The okay. tax rate piece is something you really have control over. Right. At the front end of the budget, when we're putting our budgets together, we don't know, we won't know all these numbers from the state. 
this supplemental budget process yeah. won't be done until the 11th you're nearly hour. done. Mm -hmm. We're going to be back it's uh, ridiculous. to the 11th it's hour again. Ridiculous again. But there's no way we're going to get as much money as it's we got last year. Probably not. But Probably not. There's, no there's our crystal ball. No chance. No, you're right. Be practical. So, so I mean, I, I mean, I could see saying, well, the cost or expense side will be up 1% or 2% because it's true. We're just making the point. There are contractual yeah. commitments. So, I mean, but, but I, I think it, you're better off saying what that is going to be, 0, 1, 2, whatever it might be, than you are saying what the tax rate is because that's a total unpredictable number. I don't know. Well, there, another one of the problems is the superintendent, not only pointing fingers, but I got to point it somewhere because he's accountable, is I almost felt embarrassed for them when they came back to us after being told a certain percentage. In the, in, there was the one year with the 14, there was another year with the 12, and the, the they came in with, with a straight face. Yeah, we need 12%. Yeah, well, guess what? You're not getting it. And all of a sudden, they found places where it could come out of. I think that's what I was saying about the improvement plan. Part of that is, but Tom needs a number to work yeah, with. I mean, at the end of the day, he oh, needs. No, no new spending. And then we'll see where it falls. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that consensus? No new spending? Mm hmm. I mean, I'm sure the school well, is going to go. Mean, that doesn't care. mean that we we can't come back and say we need cuts. Right. I, that's what I'm saying. This is a goal. It's yeah. just yeah. a goal right. at this point. It's something it's, to shoot it's for. It's initial yeah. guidance. You, yeah. Flat. Yeah. Let's just go with flat. You say yeah. we won't come back and say don't make cuts. Did you say? Make no, make no. Cuts. I'm saying that even though we say flat line, doesn't mean that we can't come back and say we need additional cuts. You know, if the state says, hey, you you got to pay us $50 million well, dollars this yeah. year. Well, you know. Or something else worse happens, like you spoke about earlier, which we don't want to go over again. Until later, we will. Yep. All right. All right. I, I Do we really need to vote? I mean, these are only 15. I just had two other thoughts I just threw out there. They don't need to be your goals. These are things that the staff's going to work on, um, many of which were already covered. But uh, we will probably early in the first quarter this year report to the town on town council on town properties and a proposed disposition. We've come to a, acquire properties through tax clean foreclosure and purchase and goodness knows however else um, some of those properties don't serve any current and we can't expect much future any future use and so the question is you know should we sell it uh, so we're working in Answers, to prepare yes. that so <laughs> that's something that we're going to do whether it becomes your goals is another matter also marsh migration or sea level rise is yep. is real um, and yeah. we need to really start getting ahead uh, understanding it and getting ahead of it uh, with the whole marsh system that we have here there's a potentially huge impacts on in public infrastructure right. uh, culvert size roads bridges that doesn't um, tie in with the fema ooh, fema ooh, stuff doesn't cover um, that a little, a little bit sort of related. a little bit it's sort of related this is really to long-term planning really for our capital planning and and right. also um disaster response so there's a lot of different elements so it's a uh, it's 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 a phenomenon that's been uh, very well documented now it's happening and we need to be prepared for it so I'll offer up for that because I went, Tom and I went to the uh, um, FEMA meeting today in Portland just because I live at the beach and yep. so I have a lot of people who are interested in the issue. Yep. So uh, I'd be happy to work with Tom on, on the FEMA thing. And we've been working on that marsh migration on the Conservation Commission. Yeah. So that'd be good. Yep. So those are ongoing, and, and those will be uh, work will happen, and I think council will hear reports on that through the course of the year anyway. So to answer your question, you don't need to vote. I don't, no, I don't. I got 12, <laughs> twelve people over on responsible budgeting because it's all I'd part say. of the legislative dialogue. Right. 
that's primarily focused on don't take our money. Right. Keep it holding holding them accountable. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or what other what other uh, um, spending uh, or sources of revenue can we have? Mm. So I'll, I'll merge uh, 12 under one. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of a strategy, if you will. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we need to vote on it. I think uh -huh. we're good. I think that's a good. I mean, it's like some years we had and 25. Got, so. And four and 13 are really uh -huh. more or less combined too. You know, we've got your business yeah, yeah. business yep. focus stuff. Okay, I'll merge those two. So it looks like you have 12. Oh. Yeah. I think it's all stuff that we, we can accomplish this year. Yeah, and that'd be key. If we can accomplish it, that will look, that would be great. Fabulous. Good. Our work is done. I will um, find two these. I won't change the concept, but I'll try to make it concise and understandable. And um, I should have time. And when? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll get it done. It'll be on your agenda for your next meeting on the 15th. I'll get it done tomorrow. Did everybody get to say what they wanted tonight? Nothing left? To Good job, Jim. You, know, you got your uh, everything out, Ed? Yes, you can. All right. So um, there's no adjournment because it's just a workshop. Right. So I'll just. Our thoughts are done. With Kate. Yeah. Our thoughts Kate. are with Kate. With Kate. Oh, yes. Oh, one other thing I forgot. Tough for yes, tough day for Kate. Um, one thing uh, I was going to mention. Did Kate ever get you a list of goals? That she had? No. No. Okay. No, I saw this morning. I'd so. Yeah, I know. I mentioned that to her a while back. I sent her an email to have her send me some, but she never yeah. responded back to me. So. Okay. Well. All right. Well, she's got a lot going on, so I meant if she's got something we can add. Yeah. We'll you just, know, we'll, we we'll can just, add. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. incorporated in here. I don't think I've heard yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, we can so. touch on some of that stuff. Good. Thank you for your time and effort. Thank you. Uh, keeping your thoughts, I believe that yeah. Ron Alquist's father died. Yes, yes, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah.